From KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. This is the San Antonio Police Department. We know you're in there. A standoff at a Southside apartment complex ends with a man behind bars this morning. We're actually going to hear from a neighbor who saw it on unfold. We have hotels available, but we don't have the schools available any longer, so we really need to be prepared. El Paso is planning to open a new shelter to host asylum seekers. What the El Paso mayor is saying their goal is about this new facility. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, we are still under 80 degrees. I know a lot of people are trying to do those errands. If you do, do them early. Good morning. It is 8 o'clock. It is Saturday, August 19th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Good morning. So, good morning. Good morning to you. Out and about the last week. Yeah. Um, I was in Corpus yesterday and I swam in my parents' pool. Okay. It might as well have been a hot tub. Oh my goodness. I swam in uh, my aunt and uncle's pool too. I think it was probably 90 degrees it in the water. It needed some ice cubes. Oh my goodness. Even the pools need ice cubes. That's how hot it is. But hey, starting this morning, we've actually got a little bit of fog out there this morning. Mainly east of San Antonio. Visibility is as low as a quarter of a mile out in Seguin. Now this fog is quickly lifting as we get uh, the first light of the day. You can actually see some lower level clouds here as we look across the city of San Antonio. Not too bad to start the weekend, but it's going to get hot. 79 degrees in San Antonio right now, 79 in New Braunfels. In Seguin, 75. In Bernie, 73. Not too bad in Kerrville where it's 70 degrees up in the hill country. Notice that relative humidity is high at the moment, but as we head into the peak heat of the day, that humidity is going to come down, and by now you know the drill. High fire danger today and tomorrow, particularly in the afternoon. 104 today and 103 tomorrow. Hey, coming up in the forecast though, there is a chance for some folks around Texas to see some rain. We even have an isolated chance or two here in San Antonio and will temperatures dip below 100? It's possible. Details ahead. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. A San Antonio man wanted on three felony warrants now waking up behind bars. But what's different about this is what exactly a SWAT team had to do to get him. John Paul Braha shows us those harrowing moments in what neighbors saw causing them to say it was a night they will never forget. Just before 6 p.m. Thursday, 29-year-old Samuel Espinoza found himself in a standoff with SAPD at this Southside apartment complex in the 6200 block of South New Braunfels, which left neighbors in a panic. Turned off the lights, got him down off, off the bed, put the kids on the floor because we we're kind of scared of maybe somebody's going to start shooting or something because you don't know if somebody's going to start shooting and bullets are going to start ricocheting through the window and, and just all sorts of possibilities start running through your head. What was a scary situation for Paul Garcia and his family had another woman fearing for her life. That woman was inside the apartment with the suspect. She called a friend for help who then called police. SAPD says when they approached the apartment, they heard someone inside saying, quote, stay quiet and don't say anything. This is the San Antonio Police Department. We know you're in there. You're not in trouble. We want to help you. We want to make sure that you're okay. After hours of negotiations with SAPD's Special Operations Unit, Espinosa gave himself up and no one was hurt. But neighbors say the incident gave them a night they'll never forget. You see a whole bunch of lights. Uh, you just see a whole bunch of cops scattered. Uh, cops in the front of the situation, cops in the back. We've never had the place around it like that where SWAT team was actually there. We never actually witnessed anything like that. So that was the first time experience. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Local leaders want to prepare for future migrant surges with a new shelter, but a new law does not allow cities to shelter migrants in previously closed schools, something the city of El Paso used to do. The city is now considering a new facility to, ho to host both migrants and animal services. The main goal will be to help migrants' mental health. Asylum seekers, especially kids, will be allowed to play with the animals. We'll have a play area, we'll have a walk area, we'll have an area that really will help, again, our asylum seekers, but also our, our four-legged friends. So the city of El Paso is working with El Paso ISD to get a new school building for this new shelter. The mayor is also saying they would like to have a space as a long-term solution. Officials have been in talks with the federal government to fund this shelter. 
Well, Governor Greg Abbott traveling the state. Abbott and the state's Department of Transportation announcing a record $142 billion investment for our state infrastructure. So the governor then made his way on to Dallas. He was the keynote speaker at the Young Republican National Convention. Now, there were about 800 people at the event, now, the largest number they've actually ever seen. People traveling across the country and Governor Abbott discussed a number of his priorities. I cannot emphasize enough that your aggressive agenda is needed now more than ever, far more important than it's ever been. Abbott also addressed the controversial border buoys, saying that he will not let them come down, even going as far as saying President Biden will have to see him in court. The company Finance Buzz says they will pay someone a $1,000 to sample 25 oh. popular Bucky snacks, including the Beaver Nuggets. You have to document everything, okay. write reviews, Done. take pictures. They'll also give you 250 bucks for snacks and merchandise. If interested, you can apply on Finance Buzz website by September 11th. We should do that here. So I just want to break down the numbers. So they give you 250 to buy all the stuff, right? That's like your stipend? Yes. And then if you do it, document it all, take pictures, you get an extra $1,000. Okay, but do you have to, they'll select you before you go into this whole process. Yeah, okay. I admit, mean, because you got to get the 250. Okay. You want to split it? I think we could do this as a team. I think we would make a great team. Yeah. We should document right here on GMSA. Bucky's, you heard it here <laughs> first. Time now, just about 8.07, 78 degrees. We were seeing the signs of heat stress and uh, fruit loss. Up next, a professor from Texas A&M tells us how farmers in and around Texas, they are dealing with this heat and what it could mean for choppers. Oh, we're all dealing with this heat. It's really impacting so many different aspects of the life. Yesterday, I was traveling on 410. I saw three different grass fires. Ooh. The day before, I saw two grass fires on 37. Please stay safe out there. Sarah Spivey will have her forecast when we come back. Alrighty, everyone, welcome back. So we know this brutal heat is proving to not only be difficult for us, but also for our crops as well. We were seeing the signs of heat stress and uh, fruit loss and plants are just generally suffering. They're wilting by the afternoon. Yeah, that's, that's right. And despite this heat, Josh McGinty at Texas A&M expects an average yield actually of crops this summer. But here's the thing, if we continue to go without rain, and I don't see any rain in the forecast in a big way anytime soon, the number of crops growing next year could drastically drop, and this puts farmers in a tight place. Farmers spend a lot of money up front on a growing season, and they have no idea how it's going to shake out in uh, two weeks or a month's time. It's not just before the rain, you actually need rain after to help recharge the soil for the next harvest. So that was interesting to me to find that out is that, you know, even though the harvest this year should be okay, next year could be difficult. Well, because the drought impacts the soil, like mm -hmm. you said, and not just at the surface level, but like so many feet deep when we're in such a severe drought, that land gets really like hard and dry mm -hmm. and the, therefore the roots go so deep, you know, they the water needs to get like really down there yeah. to really energize those crops. And we do have a decent chance for rain Tuesday and Wednesday for the winter garden region, which are areas southwest of San okay, Antonio. Okay, that's good. Yeah, but here in the Alamo City, it's gonna be hard for us to see a, a beneficial rain this week, unfortunately. But there is a small chance for isolated rain. As you step outside this morning, feels comfortable. 66 in Comfort, 70 in Kerrville. In the Hill Country, that's where it feels comfortable. Not so much here in San Antonio. It's 79 degrees in the Alamo City right now, and the humidity is high. You take a look outside, and you can see some low clouds, haze on the horizon. 88% humidity, southeast winds at about 10 miles per hour. Heat index already feels like it's in the mid 80s. And when we look at the forecast today, already by 10, we're going to be near 90, 95 at noon, mostly sunny, 
2, it'll be 100 already, 2 p.m. at 100 degrees, and then 104 for the high temperature today. Not a record, but it will be our 54th 100 degree day of the year so far. And we've got some more of 100 degree days in the forecast. In your neighborhood, it's going to be 108 in Catula, 105 in Del Rio, 101 in Rock Springs, 104 in Gonzales, 103 in Beeville, 103 in Canyon Lake, Bulverde, Bernie Lotus will be at 101 today and uh, Divine should be at about 103 this afternoon, 105 in Floresville and in Pleasanton. So that heat high still in control, but the heat high is going to move northeast and away from south central Texas during this week. That'll help us shave off a couple of degrees from the high. The reason why the high is moving is because of this uh, hurricane, Hurricane Hillary, category four hurricane in the Pacific, heading north toward Baja, California. Now, before Hillary gets it to Southern California, it's going to weaken substantially. Here's a look at Hillary's track, uh, advancing quickly toward Baja, California overnight tonight as at least a category two hurricane. By the time it moves into San Diego and Los Angeles Sunday during the middle of the day, it should really only be a tropical storm. That means wind speeds shouldn't be all that high, 40, 50 mile per hour gusts at times. And then as it moves through Nevada, it's going to fall apart. So really the winds from Hurricane Hillary are not going to be a major, major issue. The issue is going to be the rainfall. Take a look at the potential rainfall across Southern California. Some of these areas will see five to seven inches of rain, especially in the dark green through Palm Springs and even out toward Los Angeles. But in the desert, especially, they will see a year's worth of rain in a matter of hours. So impressively dangerous flooding risk there. Now to the tropics here, we are going to see an impact from a wave, a tropical wave that's over Cuba right now. It has a 50% chance of developing into a tropical depression or a tropical storm as it moves across the hot waters of the Gulf of Mexico. But regardless of development, development, it really does look like the bulk of the rain is going to stay south of San Antonio. Take a look at the future cast. Uh, by Tuesday, the tropical moisture will be moving on shore between Brownsville and Corpus Christi and then bringing uh, rainfall, good heavier rain to Laredo area. But here in San Antonio, unfortunately, only isolated rain for us Tuesday and Wednesday, 20 to 30 percent coverage. So some people are going to miss out on the rain completely. But we may be able to briefly dip below 100 degrees on Tuesday and Wednesday. That would end a triple digit streak by Monday. That'll be our 23rd 100 degree day in a row, guys. And overnight, we had some pictures sent into our KSAT Connect of the string of lights moving through mm. the sky. I'll show you some of those pictures and what those lights were. No, it's not aliens. No aliens? Not aliens. Oh. Not today. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Not today. Time. <laughs> this right. is about 816, 78 degrees. What were we going to say? Keep going with the aliens. We're going to talk about what's happening on Texas Eats. The FO reroll is delicious. It has kind of this soupy texture to it. And then you have all the greens in there. All right, today on Texas Eats, David Elder trying West African food at a San Antonio cafe and lounge. We have a full preview next. We know that a lot of our students have needs around food, around housing. Today, right. UTSA students have a chance to save on some essential items nice. for their dorm rooms. We'll tell you how and what's up for grabs. Good morning, welcome back. So UTSA gearing up for the first day of school just a couple days away. But before students head back to the classroom, they have a chance to get some essential items for their dorm or apartment. So the Roadrunner Food Pantry will be holding move-in market today. Students will be able to shop for items like bedding, towels, and non-perishable foods. All the items at the move-in market are donated from people within the UTSA community. We want them to have um, not only the neat things that they need to be successful in the classroom, but the things that they need in their in their home and so and to be comfortable. The move in market will go from 11 this morning until four in the afternoon in parking lot BK5. 
Again, parking lot BK5 on the UTSA main campus. Campus has a lot of parking lots. So BK5, everything in the move in market is free. Oi, oi, zoo pals. Buzz, buzz, zoo pals. Quack, quack, zoo pals. Zoo pals make eating fun. Okay, I'm just going to say it. I feel like you had a lot of zoo pals. I didn't. No? I think I was past this generation. You give off, you give off heavy zoo pal vibes. Oh, I, that's a compliment. Yeah, so <laughs> if you need some plates for your dorm, zoo pals, they are back after being discontinued for nearly 10 years. Hefty announcing that starting tomorrow, zoo pal is available on Amazon, Target, and Walmart. About $7 for a pack of 20. It says that if you can eat baby carrots off the duck plate. I just want, I'm just like trying to stare at some of the options here. I like the turtle. Turtle, okay. I like turtle. There's a, I like turtles. <laughs> There's a frog there. I know you have, uh, what do you have, Mr. Frog Mr. in your, Mr. in your? Toad. Mr. Those are Toad. cute. I never had uh, zoo pals growing up. I want them now. I know what you did have though. What you had I Beanie have? Babies. 100% you had Beanie Babies. I did have Beanie Babies and the maker of Beanie Babies saying it's releasing a new limited edition bear to help wildfire survivors in Hawaii. It's named Aloha Aww. and it's gold with a rainbow ribbon and the words Maui Strong on its chest. Ty Warner says all profits from its sale will go to the American Red Cross. Beanie Babies come with birthdays and poems. Aloha's birthday is August 8th, the day the wildfires took off in Maui. Its poem says, quote, helping each other all day long, we will forever stay strong. We will forever stay Maui strong. Oh, that's awesome. Sweet. Yeah, time now, 822, 78 degrees. You grab some of that in the bowl, put it all together, you go for it. It is delicious and it's a fun experience. Okay, if you're getting hungry, David Elder heads to a San Antonio cafe and lounge for some West African food. This is a typical Nigerian dish and it's called a foruro. It's actually um, veggies which will be spinach and colored greens tossed in the, this uh, red bell pepper sauce. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's very nice. Delicious. And you get to add a protein to this if you'd like. And we actually added beef to this yes, one. Yes, there's beef in there. All right, so show me, how do we do this? Okay. Teach me how to do it. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> you basically just take um, a piece. Okay, take a piece. Like that. It sticks together. Okay, you're kind of playing with it. You've, yeah, you've done you, this before. you want to mold it. <laughs> Just go take up your sauce. Okay, I'm gonna take some of the sauce. Oh, okay, I think I did it right. Here you go. Cheers. Cheers. That's the bite. Mm. Oh, that's very good. And you can eat with your hands. The Efo Riro is delicious. It has kind of this soupy texture to it. And then you have all the greens in there, the beef in the middle. You can pick any protein you want to go on there. You just get a little bit of whatever side item you get to make a little bit, kind of like a little bread. It's like a little dumpling kind of texture. You grab some of that in the bowl, put it all together, you go for it. It is delicious and it's a fun experience. This is delicious. I love the flavor that's in here. And I'm so glad that you got to share your culture with me and show me how to eat like this. This is so fun. I'm in. All the dips? All the dips. I'm in. I love it. places you can eat with your hands, if we're yeah. going to be honest. Yeah. That Ethiopian food is fantastic. All right. Time now. 827. 78 degrees. We'll be right back. Good morning. Welcome back. Happy Saturday. It is 830 this morning. It is August 19th. It's really Good felt morning. like August 19th since the end of June. Well, it's frustrating because... Sarah, you said usually by like what, the 20th, 20th 25th is usually our average 100 degree our day? Our average last 100 yeah. degree day is uh, falls on August 26th. So, uh, you know, we're at the time of the year where we start to see things cool down a little bit, but today is not going to be one of those days. Today and this weekend is going to be very hot. Forecasting a high of 104 today. There are some areas of fog out there this morning, especially in the valleys and the more rural areas outside of San Antonio and Seguin. Visibility is as low as a quarter of a mile. And here's a picture of some of that fog. If you live in a lower uh, valley or uh, lower elevation, you may be seeing some of that fog that has developed. Temperatures are right near the dew points. That's the visual picture this morning. Last night, a lot of people saw this train of lights in the sky. Friendly reminder that these are the Starlink satellites. Starlink uh, satellites 
rights are owned by SpaceX, and they're a part of a uh, campaign to get internet all throughout the, the world. Uh, and they travel sometimes in these lines. They look a little foreign in our sky. I mean, they are. And they just were built uh, were up in the atmosphere in 2019. So they're fairly new. If you would like to learn more about the Starlink satellites, you can scan that QR code. I read, wrote wrote an article about the Starlink satellites out there. Now today's forecast calls for heat. All right, 10, it's going to be near 90. Noon, 95 degrees, 104 for the high temperature today at 5 p.m. And we'll have a southeast breeze at 10 to 15 miles per hour. And look at that forecast. Yeah, it's, it's bad news. But in the week ahead, there are are going to be a few changes that will drop our temperatures a little bit and even bring an isolated opportunity for rain or two. Details ahead. Max, Sarah. Sarah, thank you. This morning we now know a man is facing charges of evading arrest and possession of a stolen firearm after a chase with Bear County Sheriff's deputies ended in him being shot. So BCSO tells us a man with a gun was seen inside the timeout sports bar on the northeast side. He was then kicked out by security as deputies arrived. He then took off, which led to a chase. BCSO alleges that the man was waving his gun at the deputy, and that's when BCSO fired. The suspect was shot, taken to the hospital. He's expected to be okay. BCSO says they are now searching for a second suspect in that situation. All right, we know a lot of people out and about over the weekend, so if you do have plans, a lot of traffic changes on the north side you're going to need to know about. So take a look. Text not closing portions of Loop 1604 overnight. This is all part of the 1604 North Expansion Project, both directions from the Northwest Military Highway exit ramps to the Northwest Military Highway entrance ramp closed. Now, the intersection at 1604 and Northwest Military Highway fully closed, including all the turnarounds. Now, these closures will be in place from now until Monday morning, 5 a.m. We know you still got to get around, so we have all that detour information posted for you right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Another mosquito has tested positive for West Nile virus. It's actually the seventh time this has happened this summer in the San Antonio area. The latest positive test result came from a mosquito in East Bear County. So according to CDC, there have been two reported cases of West Nile virus in humans in Bear, Bear County this year and 20 cases in Texas. So symptoms include fever, headache, body aches and vomiting. And right now on KSAT.com, we have a full list of things you could do to protect yourself. Just take a look at this article online. And as kids head back to school, doctors and parents, they're worried about a shortage of ADHD medicine. Some parents say they've had to skip doses or ration pills for their kids because pharmacies are simply out of the meds. Recently, the FDA urged drug makers to increase production. Now, the drug makers say they're working to resolve the problem, but it is likely to linger for the foreseeable future. Well, student scores in the state standardized test have continued to improve since the pandemic, but more than half of Texas students are still struggling with math and about half of them are below grade level reading. So over the last several years, the Texas legislature has tried to pass laws providing more tutoring for struggling kids and more preparation for educators. Schools have also received federal funds to help with learning recovery after the pandemic and a special legislative session is expected sometime this fall to address these falling scores. And Ken Paxson's team says there is no evidence to support impeachment, even though Texas House impeachment managers, they're saying otherwise. So the Texas House impeachment managers, they've submitted, get this, nearly 4,000 pages of documents providing new and exhaustive details of the allegations of abuse of office by the currently suspended Attorney General Ken Paxton. All of this coming in ahead of his impeachment trial. The documents provide details of how Paxton allegedly misused his office to help the Austin real estate investor and campaign donor, Nate Paul. Uh, we have the whole breakdown just like this, ksat.com. All right, now to the road, 2024. Just days until the first Republican debate, it looks like former President Donald Trump will not be on the debate stage. ABC's Rachel Scott gives us a current inside look into the campaign trail. This morning, all eyes on Georgia. As Atlanta braces for Donald Trump's surrender, his Republican rivals flooding the battleground state, pitching a new direction for the party. I hope that uh, we will be focused on the future of the country rather than uh, some of the other static that's out there right now. 
notably absent, the former president, still maintaining a commanding lead in the race. It won't be the only time his challengers take the stage without him. Sources tell ABC News Trump is not only planning to skip the first debate, but is considering counter-programming it. His former running mate insisting he should show up. You know, I always stood loyally by President Donald Trump until my oath to the Constitution required me to do otherwise. But my differences with the president go far beyond that fateful day. And I hope to have a chance to debate him with him. Much of the Republican field has been reluctant to take on Trump over his election lies. The New York Times reporting that a strategy memo posted by a pro-DeSantis super PAC advises him to defend Trump when former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie attacks him. Christie firing back. Because people are really beginning to wonder what the hell he stands for. And if what he stands for is defending Donald Trump, then just drop out of the race and endorse him. Trump has less than a week to surrender in Georgia. The former president expected to be photographed and fingerprinted. The state's Republican governor, Brian Kemp, suggesting it's time to move on from the former president and his repeated false claims about the 2020 election. That was three years ago. And if you're still mad about that, quit complaining about that. Officials here in Atlanta are preparing to ramp up security with Trump expected to surrender in just a matter of days. Remember that deadline for Trump to surrender just two days after the first Republican debate, just the latest example of his legal calendar clashing with his political calendar. Guys. All right. The city council budget or district four budget town hall scheduled for today. It has been rescheduled. City officials say the town hall will now take place next Saturday, August 26th. It'll be 2 p.m. at Miller's Pond Community Center on Old Pearsall Road. All that information, the remaining budget town halls, just head to ksat.com. And after this weekend, more of our students will head back to class and a list of districts set to begin the school year on Monday include Comal ISD, Medina Valley ISD, New Braunfels ISD, Somerset ISD, and Southwest ISD. We wish everyone good luck heading back and happening today. Students and their families are invited to the District 6 Back to School Bash. It's happening at Hallmark University from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Your kids will be able to get their vaccines, haircuts, and free school supplies while they last. And our KSAT community team will be setting up shop at the Alamo Dome next weekend for the KSAT Pigskin Classic. Obviously, we're excited to get all the donations for the San Antonio Food Bank during all four of the games. Pull out the phone right now, scan the QR code on your screen, make a donation, or you can head to our website, ksat.com. You can see a full list of all of the items that the food bank says they need the most. And don't forget to get your tickets for this year's KSAT Pigskin Classic. They're on sale right now. Pull out your phone, scan this QR code to see all of our ticket options. Remember, this is high school games kicking off their season in the Alamo Dome. It is a big deal for these teams, and it's a very exciting environment and atmosphere to be in. So this all kicks off Friday, followed by our triple header on the 26th. You don't want to miss it. This is happening next weekend, of course. Mm -hmm. Max Massey, myself, and Sarah Spivey, we're going to be live out there for GMSA from 8 to 10, kind of acting as the pep rally, getting everyone all pumped up for all of the big games. Triple header. That's, it's a long day. It's a long day. I'm it's, excited. It's exciting, though. Time now, 840, 79 degrees. 79 degrees. It's hot outside. Even the pools feel like hot tubs. Sarah Spivey will let us know about our forecast when we come back. Today, San Antonio Pets Alive having an adoption event at the Lost Bar and Grill located on Northwest Military Highway from noon to 4 p.m. There will be 10 free adoptions in honor of the Lost Bar and Grill's 10th anniversary. Oh, look at that precious face. All adoption fees are waived and all dogs come microchipped in with updated vaccines. How can you say no to that? All right, precious well, angel. perfect story to follow up with. A new study led by Texas A&M saying it is good for dogs to socialize with humans and other pets. It can even help them live longer, healthier lives. Now, researchers looked at more than 21,000 dogs. They found poor health among dogs who lived in households with financial difficulties and other stress factors. They found that social time with both humans and other animals they had a great influence on healthy aging among those pups. I think this is the same for cats, too, because I'll mm. tell you one thing. My cat, Nora, 
she's healthy. Yeah. Meaning she's she's a unit. She's pretty healthy. Mm. I think the more, the more spoiled, the more they know they are loved. Yes. They have a will to live. Absolutely. And also, it's beneficial to us, too. It is. It is. So, Max, maybe mm. one day you'll get a dog. Yeah, maybe one day I'll get a house, too. But we're not there yet. <laughs> Where we are, though, it's pretty hot. It is hot. You know, temperatures have been in the triple digits for t today will be 21 days in a row. We have been at or above 100 degrees. As we look outside right now, though, early this morning, you can see there's some areas of low clouds and fogs. Fog. Anywhere you see this low cloud covered, that's where we've got some fog in some of the valleys. So just keep that in mind, but the fog is quickly lifting. It's 79 degrees already in San Antonio. Comfort in Kerrville dipped into the 60s this morning. Not too bad in those higher elevations. 77 in Hondo. Good morning in Pleasanton. It's 81 degrees. 77 in Bulverde, but very quickly today we are going to warm up by noon. We're going to be at 95 degrees, so you've got until now from now until about 11 a.m. to get some of the yard work done because after 11 it's going to be in the 90s in the afternoon, mostly sunny. 100 at 2, already at 100 degrees at 2 p.m., and then 104 for the high temperature today. That won't be a record for the day, but it will be our 54th 100-degree day of the year so far. And then later on tonight, if you're looking for a time frame to go for a walk uh, from about 7.45 to 8.45 or after, you should be fine. It'll be not humid, and temperatures will be falling into the 90s. So looking at neighborhood highs, 103 in Yavaldi, 108 in Catula, 101 Rock Springs, 103 Canyon Lake, 104 Gonzalez and in Pleasanton. And again, as I mentioned, today will be 54 100 degree days. We are close to the top three spots, my friends. 2011, we had 57 100 degree days. Just last year, we had 58. And 2009 takes the cake with 59 100 degree days. After today, we're only going to be five away from tying first place. It is as possible. But we are going to potentially dip below 100 degrees on Tuesday and Wednesday of this upcoming week. The reason for that, some tropical moisture that's going to be moving across uh, Texas. There is an area, a tropical wave right now over Cuba that has a 50% chance once it enters the Gulf of Mexico into becoming an organized tropical depression or tropical storm. Regardless of its organization, it is going to sling some of that moisture across Texas on Tuesday. So here's a look at the future cast. You can see by Tuesday that low pressure system gets a little closer. But notice that the rain really is only going to be a major factor for areas well south of San Antonio. We're talking the Rio Grande Valley up to Laredo. That's where it looks like they're going to have the best opportunity for rain. In San Antonio on Tuesday and Wednesday, we're only going to have a few isolated showers and storms. So coverage will only be 20 to 30%. Disappointing, I know we need the rain, but at least temperatures should be just below 100 degrees on Tuesday and Wednesday. And there is a small chance for one of those isolated showers or storms. Looking at the forecast over the next several days, 104 today, 103 tomorrow as we round out the weekend. Friendly reminder that fire danger is high. Do not park your cars on grass and make sure to extinguish cigarettes fully. We'll briefly dip below 100 Tuesday and Wednesday before we're back at the triple digits again on Thursday and Friday. Hey, coming up, if you're tired of hearing me talk about the weather, I've got some cute kiddos to give you some tips and tricks on how to stay cool. Stick around for that during the 9 o'clock hour. Excited for those videos. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 849, 79 degrees. Yeah, are you proud of a 75? Of course not, you know. Tim Gerber takes us behind the kitchen door. That's up next. The manager of a Mexican food restaurant claimed the inspector wasn't feeling their energy when she gave them a low score last month. It's like such a Gen Z thing to say. <laughs> like, no, I'm not feeling your energy. Why don't you get out of here? All right, and a north side at Chinese restaurant undergoing some big changes after their inspection. Tim Gerber shows us what was happening behind their kitchen doors. China Harbor, located in the 17,000 block of Highway 281 North, got an 80 on their July inspection. 
It also appears to have been their final inspection. The business was closed this week when we stopped by and crews were clearing the place out. How long have you guys been working? For about a week now. The inspection report stated the business was going through an ownership change. A sign on the front door says they closed at the end of July and a new seafood and sushi buffet will open in its place later this year. <laughs> Alamo Cafe in the 14,000 block of 281 North earned an 82 on their July inspection. Equipment was dirty with grease and debris. There was mold on surfaces where glasses are stored and some caulking was also moldy. Workers were caught adjusting hats and blowing their noses, then continuing to work without hand washing. One worker handled food with their bare hands. The inspector gave them 10 days to clean things up or face a reinspection. <laughs> El Charo de Alisco at 8388 Marbach comes in with a 75. Food in a walk-in cooler was way too warm at 70 degrees. Other foods on the cook's line were also above temp. They were all put on ice. Employees didn't wash their hands. Those unwashed bare hands were then seen touching tacos that were served to customers. Manager Miguel Garcia came outside to talk. He claimed the inspector just wasn't feeling their vibe that day. She wasn't low-key, like, feeling our side, like, okay. our energy, so, I mean, that was, I don't know if it was personal, but okay. that was on her. But you guys are doing a better job, you'd oh, say? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Taqueria Nuevo Vallarta and the 3400 block of Roosevelt also earned a 75. They had to throw out food cooked the day before because it was too warm. Food that was above temp in a reach-in cooler under the grill was also tossed out. Knives in the rack they were stored on were dirty with food debris. Workers weren't washing hands or changing gloves, and the cook was touching food with their bare hands. The inspector left a long list of items to be corrected for a reinspection. For Behind the Kitchen Door, Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. You know what we need now? We, on the scores, they need a vibe check, too. Yeah, vibe check. Mm. But what was the vibe like? Yeah, we were just joking with our producer, saying, if Tim Rivers shows up to your restaurant... Vibe's probably not good. Bad vibes. <laughs> All right, time now, 8.55, 79 degrees. If you're wanting to get some extra money this spooky season, we'll tell you how SeaWorld can help you out. Morning and welcome back. All right, SeaWorld looking for some scare actors for Hollow Scream from now until August 27th. You can try out to be a zombie or try out to be a monster. Have you thought about this? I mean, when I walk in in the morning with no makeup, I could probably qualify for these roles. <laughs> <laughs> no joke. If you, want, if you want to apply, we have all the information right now. Just head to ksat.com. So, between you and Sarah Spivey, who would get the most scares? Oh my gosh, I'm, pr I'm pretty scary when I walk in uh -huh, and I haven't had right my there. coffee. <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah, that pretty much sums it up. Matt, Some of the producers know, like when I walk in. the waters, my We friend. don't even. No, you, you. No. No, like let me, put some, let me put some makeup on. Let me have yeah. a couple sips of coffee before I start chatting. You know, the, the trick is you just have to have a headphone in and pretend like you don't hear anything. Okay. This morning, Max walked in, and Sarah and I were deep in conversation. We're like, oh, good morning, Max. He pretended not to hear us. And I was like, I know he's pretending. I don't know what you're talking I had a headphone in. I was you jamming out. You had one headphone in. I was mentally in. preparing for you're, the day. Speaking you. of which, we have a lot more to come on GMSA. We'll be right back. All right, we are starting off with a live look out of the Alamo City. A couple skies out there. Oh, no, it's already 80 degrees. It's like the line of demarcation for me. It's been 78, 79 through the morning, so if you got things to do, do them before 11 a.m. But for now, good morning. It is 9.01 this Saturday. And like another weekend, it's going to be hot. It's, it's going to be humid. It's going to be hot. Uh, kids are going back to school. Yeah. Some are already back. I know. And just like Sarah, while they're like waiting for the bus, and I've seen some in hoodies because I know the classrooms are kept so cold and they're just trying to defrost when they, but like hoodies in the triple digits around 4 p.m. Ooh. Yikes, especially because today it's going to be 104 for the high temperature. Yeah, another hot day. Today will be our 21st 100 degree day in a row in our 54th 100 degree day for the year. 
Yep, we're just adding on to the triple digit tally. All right, let's take a look at the pollen count though today. As expected, no issues. The only allergen out there is molds and molds are low today. Take a look outside. We started off the morning with a good layer of clouds there on that picture, but as you can see, things have cleared out for us. We've got mostly sunny skies. We are off to the races with the heat, my friend. It's 80 degrees in San Antonio, 83 in New Braunfels, 76 in Seguin, 77 in Burning. Good morning in Kerrville, where it's 76 six degrees. Take a look at humidity. Humidity is high right now. Relative humidity anywhere from 75 to 95 percent. But in the afternoon, that humidity is going to come down. It's going to be hot. There's a lot of dry vegetation out there. So fire danger will continue to be high this weekend. 104 today and wow, one degree cooler tomorrow. 103 on Sunday. It's going to be a hot weekend. Let's stay vigilant with our heat and fire safety because in the week ahead there will be at least to shake up in our weather pattern. There's a tropical wave over Cuba right now that has a 50% chance of organizing into either a tropical depression or a tropical storm in the Gulf of Mexico. Here's the thing though, don't get too excited about rain chances. I'll have those details and we'll have some fun heat safety tips from some cute local children. Hope you'll stick around for that coming up in just a bit. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, we now know a man facing charges of evading arrest and possession of a stolen firearm. All of this in the aftermath of a chase with Bear County Sheriff's deputies that ended with the suspect being shot. This is what we know right now. BCSO tells us a man with a gun was spotted inside the timeout sports bar. This is on the city's northeast side. Authorities were called out there. The security guard kicked the suspect out of the bar. When deputies arrived, the suspect took off. Now that ended when a chase. BCSO alleges that the man started waving his gun at a deputy. That's when BCSO fired. Uh, the suspect was shot. He was taken to the hospital. He is expected to be okay. Right now, though, the search continues. BCSO says they are looking for a second suspect. And we now know the name of the man found dead inside his truck on Old Pearsall Road. We now know it is 47-year-old Jesus Reyes Tamez. Uh, SAPD says Tamez was found dead inside his truck around 9.30 Wednesday morning. This is a 7,000 block of Old Pearsall Road. It's not too far from Loop 410. He had been shot, and police believe that shooting happened sometime the night before. Now, the medical examiner says the death was a homicide. We're also learning the name of a woman hit and killed on I-37 earlier this month. She's been identified as 28-year-old Vivian Monique Gover. That crash happened last Thursday around 6 a.m. on I-37 near Southeast Military Drive. According to San Antonio police, Gover was walking on the highway when she was hit by a vehicle. This is still an ongoing investigation. Well, in the aftermath of the devastating and deadly fires in Maui and hurricane season here, uh, one question a lot of families are asking, do we know what to do if a disaster strikes here? So having a well-stocked home emergency kit can make all the difference. Our Jonathan Cotto shows us what you should have in that kit. According to CDC data, 48% of Americans don't have emergency supplies and about 44% don't even have a basic first aid kit in their home. We always encourage you to have a, a you know a preparedness kit, something in case the a natural disaster hits or uh, you know we're faced with prolonged power outages. Joe Arrington with the San Antonio Fire Department says it's essential for every household to be equipped with the right tools and supplies to weather any storm. Key. You know, the basics, band-aids, gauze, you know, a, a product to clean a wound with, uh, an ice pack, I mean, just your basic first aid kit that's available at any kind of pharmacy or big box store that you can get are, are great just to have, just to keep it around. And if the power goes out, you'll need flashlights, extra supply of batteries, and how about a handheld radio? So that you can get emergency alerts, anything that you know, if, if we're trying to get a hold of you to tell you that you need to evacuate or it's safe to return, something that you can have communication with the outside world. And outside of those essential items inside your home, experts also advise having your car well equipped as well. And some of those examples of what you need to have is a get home bag with a change of clothes, of course, a hand cranked radio to stay alert and informed and of course, emergency drinking water. And please don't forget to also carry a first aid kit as well. Prescription medication, having a back, making sure that you have, you know, your prescription medication is easily accessible or that you need it because that we see that a lot of times when, you know, the power's out and, and someone's either on home oxygen or needs prescriptions and they can't necessarily get to the pharmacy right away. 
Make sure you have a supply of those meds. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. All right. Here we go. If you live in District 4, listen up. The City Council District 4 Budget Town Hall, it was scheduled for today. It has since been rescheduled. City officials say the Town Hall will now take place next Saturday, August 26th. It starts at 2 p.m. at Miller's Pond Community Center. That is on Old Pearsall Road. If you have any questions on the remaining Town Halls, just head to KSAT.com. Well, the Writers Guild of America met again with major Hollywood studios just yesterday, but... Again, neither side appears to be any closer to striking a deal. In a message to members, the Guild confirmed that both sides plan to meet again next week. Now, the Guild has held talks each of the last four days with the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, but the two sides reportedly remain very far apart on some major issues. Okay, agricultural officials in Georgia sounding the alarm. Beeke a beekeeper in the state saw an invasive yellow-legged hornet earlier this month. The first time the species has been found in the U.S., its nest, get this, can house up to 6,000 worker bees. So these nests are really big. The Georgia Department of Agriculture says the yellow-legged hornet could threaten honey production, native pollinators, and other crops in the state. All right, time now, 908, 80 degrees. 80 degrees. You know what? Sarah Spivey says she has some cute videos of mm. what some local kiddos they have tips on what they, they're doing to stay cool. Morning and welcome back. Sarah Spivey, I know you talked to some students about uh, how to beat the heat. Well, so here's the thing. I actually got an email from someone from the Sunshine Cottage School for Deaf Children, and they were outside, and, you know, I get you know, sometimes tired about talking about this heat. So I thought this weekend we could get our friends to talk about the heat. This is that. Azalea. Take a look. Hi, everyone. This is, um, this weather is super hot. You have to be careful or you're going to suntan. So, so every time you come outside, you wear glasses, you wear a hat, and you also put sunscreen just in case. Way to go, Azalea. Yes, sunscreen, a hat, all of that. Such good advice. In fact, Sarah Costa and I talk about putting on sunscreen every single day. We'll be showing another video coming up in the next half hour and then again tomorrow too. But today we are going to just be looking at a hot day with high temperature of 104. Outside right now you can see clear skies uh, around San Antonio, 80 degrees. We had some clouds earlier this morning. Those clouds are now dissipating and we've got nothing left but heat. 87 at 10, 95 at noon. As we head into the afternoon, it's already going to be in the triple digits by 2 o'clock. 104 for the high temperature today. Not a record, but it will be our 54th 100 degree day so far this year. Looking at uh, the early evening hours, the uh, sun's going to set at 810 tonight. It's still going to be hot by 9 p.m. We're still going to be at 95 degrees, but with lower humidity, it's not going to feel all that bad for an evening walk if you'd like to take one this Saturday. In Rock Springs, it's going to be 101 today. Catula, sorry about this, 108 degrees in Catula, 104 in Gonzales, 103 Beeville, 105 in Del Rio. Let's take a neighborhood look around San Antonio. Sabinal, you'll be at 103, 105 in Floresville, 105 in Nixon, 103 New Braunfels, Bulverde, Bernie, Helotus, you'll be at 101 for the afternoon high. And around San Antonio again, 104. So that heat high is firmly in place. However, in the coming days, it's going to move a little bit to the northeast. It's going to be nudged by Hurricane Hillary. Now, Hurricane Hillary is in the warm waters of the Pacific right now. That warm water acting as a fuel to um, strengthen it. It's a category four hurricane with 130 mile per hour winds right around that eye. But as Hillary moves north toward Baja California later today through uh, tomorrow, it is going to enter into the cooler waters of the Pacific and actually weaken before it moves through Southern California. But Southern California actually under a tropical storm warning by tomorrow right around the midday hours Hillary will be moving through Southern California and into parts of Nevada by a Sunday night. Now as I mentioned 
weakening significantly to wind speeds of only 45 miles per hour around that eye. So the winds are not going to be the issue with Hillary for California and parts of the West. The issue is going to be the rainfall. Parts of the desert here are expected to see a year's worth of rain in a matter of hours. So widespread flooding issues are going to be a, a problem for Southern California. Now they're getting a lot of rain from a tropical system, Hurricane Hillary. We are going to be getting some isolated rain in San Antonio Tuesday and Wednesday. There is a tropical wave over Cuba right now that has a 50% chance of developing into a more organized system in the Gulf of Mexico. Regardless of if it gets organized or not, this does not look like a very good rainmaker for us in San Antonio. For parts of deep South Texas, sure, it'll produce some rain. But for us in San Antonio, it's going to be a little too far to the south, unfortunately. As I take you through the future cast, you can see that by about Tuesday, that tropical moisture will be moving across shore uh, th through Brownsville up to Laredo. That's where that bullseye for heavier rain is going to be. We're going to be a little bit too far north in San Antonio and south central Texas. Only 30% chance of rain Tuesday and 20% chance on Wednesday. So this is not the drought denter that uh, some might be hoping for. For, but it is going to allow for our temperatures to fall by a couple of degrees at least. We may struggle to get to 100 degrees on Tuesday and Wednesday of this upcoming week, but we're right back at it with the triple digits by Thursday and Friday. Guys, coming up, we will have a look at some pictures of the Starlink satellites that were out there last night. Alien. Or satellites. <laughs> they are satellites. Thank you. <laughs> no, no, 916, 81 degrees. Are these also aliens, Sarah Costa? No, they're Beanie Babies, and they're being released for a good cause. They're a limited edition. What they are doing to help Hawaii after those devastating fires. And attention all avocado lovers. Shake Shack needs your help in becoming, oh, look at this, their chief avocado officer. What an honor. I know, right? I wonder how much it pays. After the break, what you're gonna get in return and what your responsibilities are. Okay, I know Powerball is back up there to 200 and something. Right. Yeah. All right, but let's look at these numbers. Pick three, two, five, one, Fireball two, daily four, seven, two, three, eight, Fireball five. And your cash five, five, eight, 15, 20, 35. Here we go, Mega Millions, 10, 20, 29, 44, 66, big number 11, Mega Plier three, good luck, we'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. So the maker of Beanie Baby says they are releasing a new limited edition bear all in an effort to help wildfire survivors in Hawaii. It is named Aloha and it's gold with a rainbow ribbon. The words Maui Strong is on the chest. Now Ty Warner says all the proceeds from the sale will go to the American Red Cross. Beanie Babies come with birthdays and poems. Aloha's birthday in August is 8th. Well, Aloha's birthday is August 8th. That's the day the wildfire started in Maui. Its poem says, quote, helping each other all day long, we forever will stay Maui strong. Oh, I love that. And are you an avocado aficionado? Mm. Shake Shack, looking for an avocado connoisseur to be their chief avocado officer. Okay. Duties include personally inspect and taste the sliced avocados in stores to make sure they are being served perfectly. I, I, I mean, what else can you need? Yeah. This is like the dream job. All right, the winner also gets to participate in brainstorming sessions to incorporate avocados into the menu. A $3,000 avocado stipend is included and free Shake Shack for an entire year. Wait, this is not a full-time job, right? I don't know, but... $3,000? So that's just a stipend. Oh. Yeah. I don't know if it comes with salary, but if you're interested, you can apply at shakeshack.com, all the information, and for the application form. It seems pretty great. Tough job. Yeah, tough Avocados job. are having a tough season, too, because of all the drought and heat, so... Look at that. We needed that insight. Time now, 922, 82 degrees. Today on Texas Eats, after the break, David Elder has pizza and bagels on Broadway. Pizza bagels? Pizza... Oh, love p good pizza bagel.
pizzas. Talk to me about that. This is the native Texan, a uh, very traditional pizza. We've got the in-house barbecue sauce, as well as in-house smoked brisket, some pickled jalapenos, red onions, a little bit of cheddar, and a mozz provolone blend, all in the sourdough crust. Cheers to you. That's the bite. Salute. We Whoa. keep talking about our bagels, but our pizza's pretty damn good. That's a great pizza. <laughs> that is really good, man. Mm. All right, hear me out. Big pizza bagels. I am completely supportive of that. Yeah. Like homemade I bagel. think we just figured out our own business. Pizza bagels. Pizza bagels. we got to come up with a catchy name, though. But not like the frozen kind. No. no there no, it no, is. No frozen. Not the frozen kind? Not the frozen kind. That's the name of the store? <laughs> sure. We'll talk to David, see if we can get on uh, Texas Eats. <laughs> Time now, just about 927, 82 degrees. Taking a live look outside, this is the Bear County Sheriff's Office Career Fair. It's at the Tri Point YMCA on North St. Mary's Street. That's near Trinity. This event is being held for those that are interested in starting a career in detention, law enforcement, and dispatch. NBCS. Good morning and welcome back. All right, we're taking a live look out at the Bear County Sheriff's Office Career Fair. This is at the Tri Point YMCA on North St. Mary Street. Now, the event is being held for those who are interested in starting a career in detention, law enforcement, or even dispatch. That's right. So BCSO officials say detention deputies receive a $2,000 signing bonus with a starting salary of $45,000. During this event, there will be a written and physical test along with laptops so people can apply on the spot. All right. Well, time now, 930. It is 82 degrees out there. So people who are headed out there, you will have to do chores, run errands, do it early because 82 might be the lowest we see for the next few hours. It's really not playing around, Sarah. You said our high was 106 this week. Are we done with the 106 temp? I know we're going to be in triple digits for the whole week. Yeah, Sarah, unfortunately, I do still have 105 forecast by the end of next week, but in between this today and next weekend, we do have some subtle changes that I want to talk about in some parts of Texas will actually get some decent rain. Take a look, though, at the pollen count. Molds are the only allergen present. They are low this morning. We did have some fog out there in places. You can see that this picture sent in through our KSAT connect feature on our weather app shows some fog in the city of San Antonio, mainly in the valleys and in some of the rural areas. That's where we saw uh, some of that fog. Now, today's forecast already at 10. We're going to be be close to 90 degrees. So just in the next couple of hours here, we're going to already be near 90 and then around noon, 95 degrees, mostly sunny this afternoon, 104 for the high. We'll have south winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour and the sun will mercifully set at 810 tonight. It's still going to be at 92 at 10 p.m. All right, coming up in the forecast, we do have to talk about the Gulf of Mexico. We're starting to ramp up tropical season and there's actually going to be some tropical moisture moving into Texas, giving us at least a small chance for rain in San Antonio this week, and perhaps we'll dip below 100. Details ahead. Max, Sarah. Thanks, hey, Sarah. Just days after a three-year-old brought a gun in their backpack to school, gun safety educators, they are calling on our community to have more conversations about what to do with your firearms and how to keep your family safe. So educators say starting those discussions with your family can be as simple as creating a safety plan. Our Avery Everett shows us how small steps in your own home can help lead to a community-wide conversation on gun violence. And anytime you're behind the eight ball, it's tough to catch up. A community issue that Bill Slater says needs community action. Just because you're not involved in the situation doesn't mean you can't get sucked into it. Slater is a gun safety instructor. He has these conversations regularly in his classes, but he wants more people talking. This is something that needs to occur all the time. The number of shootings and gun related crimes continue to climb across San Antonio and Slater says it's everyone's responsibility to address safety efforts head on. You need to understand what's the gun capable of doing. So how do you start this conversation in your own home? University Health's Director of Injury Prevention, Jennifer Northway, says it can be as simple as creating a safety plan. We need the conversation about firearms and safe storage to become just as commonplace. The county and sheriff's office collaborate with University Health to run the program Gun Safety for Bayer. And Northway says her office has seen an increase in demand for free gun locks and cables this summer. We want to make firearm ownership as safe as possible for those who have weapons and for those who don't. 
But bringing these discussions to a bigger audience is oftentimes easier said than done. Slater says it helps to remember we're all human. Take emotion and politics out of it. The two things that are gonna be the most impossible things to do. There's no easy solution to gun violence. Every little bit helps. Something is always gonna be better than nothing. But Slater says starting the conversation is a step in the right direction. The Bear County Commissioner's Court has its final gun safe and lock handout later today, but you have to be registered to be able to pick up anything there. University Health has 12 other pickup locations to get free locks and cables. Those are listed on ksat.com. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. The Harris County Sheriff's Office has arrested the man accused of shooting and injury three law enforcement officers. 29-year-old Taryn Green allegedly shot a deputy on Wednesday during a traffic stop and shot two more officers during a standoff. Deputies confronted Green Thursday night at his home in Northeast Houston. He was taken into custody yesterday and is charged with three counts of attempted capital murder. And the Dollar Tree on North Main near San Antonio College. It is done for after a fire destroyed the building. Take a look. This is drone footage that case had acquired after the aftermath. So the fire happened just before 1 a.m. yesterday. It took crews several hours to put out the massive blaze. The store ended up having to be demolished. Right now, fire investigators, they are still working, trying to figure out how this all started. Brush fire yesterday afternoon on I-35 and New Laredo Highway had fire crews responding quickly. You can see in these trans guide camera shots, they captured smoke blowing from the side of the road over the highway. Firefighters were able to put out that fire and there were no injuries reported. And right now, the Bear County Crime Lab has about seven months worth of cases waiting to be tested. So the lab director admits that there have been challenges and there have been issues trying to even clear the backlog. Remember, last September, a lab supervisor hoped a new technique would cut the backlog in half in just months. But the lab's director says that simply hasn't happened. And staffing, that's an additional challenge. We're actually doubled our throughput now we're we're treading water if you will we're no longer losing ground we're able to uh, meet what's coming in the lab director hopes to add two more positions he says about 60 percent of the lab's workload is dedicated to sexual assault kits all right we know you're going to be out and about through the weekend there are some big traffic changes that you need to know about especially on the north side so take a look at your screen TxDOT closing portions of Loop 1604. This is all part of the 1604 North Expansion Project. Both directions from the Northwest Military Highway exit ramps, well, they're closed. So the intersection at 1604 and Northwest Military fully closed, including turnarounds. Uh, those closures will be in place from now until Monday morning, 5 a.m. If you do have to drive around in that area, you need detour information. We have all that right now. It's posted on KSAT.com. In today's health headlines, a new study finds that more young women are getting cancer. That's according to a U.S. government-funded study of 17 National Cancer Institute registries. Researchers looked at more than 500,000 cases of early-onset cancer between 2010 and 2019. Women in their 30s saw the biggest increase. Researchers saw a rapid rise in 14 types of cancers, including cancers of gastrointestinal gastrointestinal tract, which grew the fastest. And a new study suggests that when it comes to the COVID-19 booster, your choice of getting the left arm or right arm actually might make a difference. So researchers in a study, well, they found that people who received both shots in the same arm had a stronger immune response than those who switched arms two weeks after the booster. The killer T cells, which represent 67% of those who received the shots, in the same arm. Now, 67%, that's compared to 43% of those who switched off arms. Some popular products you may have in your home are being recalled, including kitchen appliances and some scented candles. Open well, your sides, Marilyn Moritz has our recall roundup, beginning with some big name dehumidifiers that are now linked to fires. Unplug it. One and a half billion dehumidifiers sold under various brands, including GE and Kenmore, are recalled. The appliances made by Gree a decade ago are linked to 23 fires. The models are on our website. It is not the first, so the Consumer Product Safety Commission warns check your dehumidifier to see if it's part of previous GRE recalls. Those are linked to hundreds of fires and possibly four deaths. We have more information on our website. 
Kitchen Danger Sencio is recalling 860,000 pressure cookers after 61 people suffered burns, some severe. The brands are Bella, Bella Pro Series, Cooks and Crux. The lid can unlock and the cooker can be opened, splashing hot food. Power down. Costco is recalling 350,000 UBO Labs power banks. It has reports of three fires, including one on a commercial flight. Costco is giving refunds. Parent alert. These toddler towers can tip. Simple A3 Company is recalling 108,000 of them after reports children got hurt. Contact the company for a fix. And don't get burned. Target is recalling more than 2 million threshold candles. The glass can break while the candle is lit. These are one wick and three wick candles sold since early 2020 in a long list of scents. Take it back. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Time now, 939, 83 degrees. Before we head to break, don't forget to get your tickets for this year's KSAT Pigskin Classic. They're on sale now. Take out your camera. Take out your phone, open your camera app, scan this QR code to see all of our ticket information. Remember, it kicks off on Friday the 25th, followed by our triple header on the 26th. You don't want to miss it. Welcome back, everyone. You know, this morning we are featuring some of the students at the Sunshine Cottage School for Deaf Children. They were out and about and really wanted to submit some videos on how to stay cool this summer. So here's Miss Rhea. It's sunny outside, but you have to drink water and get some sun classes or wear a hat. And you can play outside, but you have, you have to be careful. That is so awesome. I could tell that Miss Rhea watches KSAT because we say those very same things every single day. Thank you, Rhea, for your weather report. Uh, we're going to show a couple more tomorrow, so tune in for that. It's 81 right now in Bernie. It's 81 in Rio Medina, 85 in Castroville, and 81 at JBSA Randolph. You can see that the clouds from this morning have dissipated. We have got nothing but sunshine right now, which means we're going to have nothing but heat. Temperatures are going to be in the mid 90s by noon, just in the next couple of hours here. And then by two, we'll be at 100 degrees this afternoon, 104 for the high. It is not necessarily going to be a record today, but it will be our 21st 100 degree day in a row here in San Antonio uh, for this stretch. And then looking at tonight after the sun sets at 810, it's going to be nice and 92 degrees at 10 p.m. this evening, so still very warm. At least the humidity will be low. In your neighborhoods, it's going to be 103 in Kerrville, 103 in Canyon Lake, 104 Pleasanton, 108 Catula, 104 in Gonzales, 105 in Del Rio, 104 in Eagle Pass. And I mentioned 21 100 degree days in a row. Well, today is also going to be our 54th 100 degree day for the year. My friends, we are inching close to the top three spots back in 2011. Many of us remember that summer. We had 53, 57 rather 100 degree days for third place. Just last year we had one more 58 100 degree days and 2009 still takes the cake for the most 100 degree days at 59. But we're close. We're after today. We're only going to be five days away from taking that top spot. We will have to wait and see. There will be some time on Tuesday and Wednesday when I think the thermometer will stay below 100 degrees and interrupt that consecutive stretch of triple digits. But still, tomorrow, 103, Monday, 102. So why will we be below 100 degrees on Tuesday and Wednesday? Well, it's all because of this tropical wave, which is currently over Cuba right now. It's going to be moving into the very warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico and have about a 50% chance of uh, developing into a tropical depression or a tropical storm, but regardless of its organization, it is going to bring some moisture to South Texas. At the moment, 
It's a little unfortunate for us in San Antonio because it looks like the deep moisture will be between Brownsville and Corpus Christi. So much of the heavier rain is going to be across deep south Texas out to Laredo. So here in San Antonio, we have only got a 20% chance for an isolated shower or storm on Wednesday and slightly better rain chances the day before on Tuesday as that tropical moisture is moving overhead, but only a 20 to 30 percent chance unfortunately for us in San Antonio. The heaviest of the rain will stay south of San Antonio Tuesday and Wednesday, but with a little extra cloud cover that could just do the trick to keep us below 100 degrees on Tuesday and Wednesday. So everyone, I'd like for you to Try to pay very close attention to fire danger today because it will continue to be high. Again, it's kind of at that point where, where we're so used to the having the high fire danger, you might let your guard down. It's important to remember, extinguish cigarettes fully. Do not park cars on grass. That's how a lot of fires start, especially by the side of the road. And Sarah, um, I traveled down to Corpus Christi. On 37 on Thursday, I saw two grass fires mm -hmm. being extinguished, really backed up traffic. Yesterday on my way back on 410, another grass fire. So please it's be bad. cognizant of that. Yeah, absolutely. All right, time now, 947, 83 degrees. Taking a look outside on the roads, if you have errands to do, I know there are some kiddos that are starting school on Monday, maybe some back to school shopping, do it early and please stay safe. All right, let's take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, two, five, one, fireball two, daily four, seven, two, three, eight, fireball five. Cash 5, 5, 8, 15, 20, 35. Mega Millions 10, 20, 29, 44, 66. Mega Ball 11, Mega Player 3. Didn't someone re recently win $2 million? And Marbach HEB, yeah. Marbach and 410. That's the HEB. Is that your HEB? No, but. It's common. You keep yeah. buying tickets. <laughs> it's a numbers game. I'm heading to Marbach and 410 for that lotto ticket now. We'll be right back. A recent auction bidder thinks this wrecked car is worth $1.9 million after it was sold in California. This is a wrecked 1954 Ferrari Spider Series, and it's a piece of history. So this car, one of just 13 made of the model that Ferrari made in its racing heyday. So this kind of design, it's behind the company's world championships in 1952 and 1953. Still a Barbie. Snoop Dogg wants to keep the chill vibes all mm. year long with some ice cream. The rapper has launched a new line of frozen dessert called Dr. Bombay after Snoop Dogg's NFT character. Oh, we're still doing NFTs. That's oh, great. Okay. So the line has seven <laughs> flavors, including bonus track brownie, iced out orange cream, rolling in the dough, and s'more vibes. A lot of vibes going on this morning. S'more vibes. Uh, I'm going to go with the brownie version. Uh, the ice cream available. Hey, look at that. It's at Walmart and it's only five dollars. Can I have some more, please? I'm gonna that was funny. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna give a shout out to our producers and say, look, maybe we should have a taste test of this. Yes. We'll have that. We have some bluebell, we'll bring that in. They have their new peanut butter chocolate chip flavor that looks delicious. Mm -hmm. See which one's better. Okay. Yeah. I'm down. Breakfast champions. Time now, 953, 83 degrees. The return of Okay, a can we not with this? Two headed snake. Oh my gosh, if you're not looking at your screen, look at it right now. Because somewhere in Texas, still ahead, where you can see the snake and how it ended up at a certain zoo. Terrifying. Yeah. Coming up at the break, after the break, a look at the latest movies in Hollywood, not Barbie. <laughs> You had a fight the day before he died. You need to start seeing yourself the way others are going to perceive you. Is there anything that would seem consistent with a suicide? A marriage goes under the microscope in the first U.S. trailer for Anatomy of a Fall, about a woman suspected in the suspicious death of her husband. The French film won the Palme d'Or, the top prize, at this year's Cannes Film Festival. The drama opens in New York and Los Angeles on October 13th. I'm suffering from a temporary blockage at the moment. No, turn it back on. One. Two, five. 
Peter Dinklage is a struggling composer, Anne Hathaway a cleanliness-obsessed psychiatrist, and Marissa Tomei a quirky tugboat captain in She Came to Me. The first trailer is out for writer-director Rebecca Miller's latest romantic comedy, which opens in theaters September 29th. First came the Scott Pilgrim graphic novels, then the movie Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Now here's your first look at the anime series Scott Pilgrim Takes Off. The cast of the movie provides the voices for this latest epic of epic epicness, which debuts on Netflix November 17th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Take a look at the big return of this oh two-headed snake. Look at your screen right now. So creepy. So this is Poncho and Lefty. And they are back at the Waco Zoo. Back in 2021, aww, the little snake got a little injured and had to be taken away to heal. The snake was found in the backyard by a resident in Waco. It is a harmless Western rat snake. Okay. He or they have grown from eight inches to three feet. And the right head is the dominant side. I have a lot of questions, too. Yeah, there's a lot of when you say dominant side, I don't even know what that really means. All right. So if your favorite part about a road trip is the snacks, we got the perfect job for you. Finance Buzz is looking to pay someone $1,000 to sample 25 popular snacks at Bucky's. This includes the roadside stops, famous beaver nuggets, homemade Oreo fudge, hippo tacos and lemon crisp. Here's the thing, though. If you accept this journey, you're going to have to document your entire experience through written reviews, even photographs. If you're interested, you can apply on the Finance Buzz website by September 11th. You have to be 18 or older to qualify, and you have to be living in the United States. Mmm, beaver nuggets. They're pretty good. They're so good. Yeah, take a look outside with live cam right now. You can see we've got beautiful blue skies around San Antonio. If only it felt as great as it looked out there. Temperatures are climbing. At least molds are low. Molds are low at 180. Uh, and as we look to the forecast for the day today, 104 in San Antonio, 103 on Sunday. So it's going to be a hot weekend with high fire danger. There is a small chance for rain Tuesday and Wednesday as tropical moisture moves across deep south Texas. The heaviest of the rains will be south of San Antonio. But hey, at least it's a chance and it shakes up the forecast a bit. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Texas Seed starts right now. Live from Case at 12, the news at 5 starts right now. A disturbance call outside a sports bar leads to a car chase and shots fired. Tonight, Bear County deputies uh, shot the suspect who is now in the hospital. This is what we know about this tonight. It all happened right after midnight at the sports bar on FM 78 in Converse. The bar security guard said a man with a gun in his waistband was asked to leave when he didn't. Deputies were called when, when they got there. The man jumped into a car and took off. Deputies followed that vehicle for a while until two men bailed out on Bronze Rock Drive. One suspect pointed a gun at the deputies who then shot the man. The other suspect was quickly arrested. They are charged with evading arrest in possession of a stolen firearm. Electrical issues may have caused a fire that burned down part of a house overnight. It happened near Nogalitos and 90. When firefighters got there, they could see that fire from the street and they quickly got to work. The battalion chief said they were able to control that fire in just a few minutes. Thankfully, no one was home at the time. Investigators did notice some downed power lines outside the house that may have been the cause, though SAFD has not officially reported that yet. Sacred Heart Church in El Paso has provided shelter for migrants for months now, but once again, it is getting full and some migrants now have to stay on the streets. Reporter Alberto Perez from El Paso spoke to Mayor Oscar Leeser on how the city plans to create more shelters. Local leaders want to prepare for future migrant surges with a new shelter. But a new law does not allow cities to shelter migrants in previously closed schools or open schools, something the city of El Paso used to do. We have hotels available, but we don't have the schools available any longer. So we really need to be prepared. The numbers uh, 
El Paso Mayor Oscar Leeser mentioned this idea of a new shelter last Monday during a city council meeting. The city is now considering a new facility to host both migrants and animal services. The main goal will be to help migrants' mental health. Asylum seekers, especially kids, will be allowed to play with the animals. And we'll have a play area, we'll have a walk area, we'll have an area that really will help Again, our asylum seekers, but also our, our four-legged friends. The city is working with EPISD to acquire a new school building for this new shelter. Mayor Leeser also told me they want to be prepared for the unknown and to not have a temporary facility like the schools the city used. They would like to have a space as a long-term solution. Well, when we saw that we could no longer use the schools for sheltering, we said we need to see how we can do that, how we can really make sure we maximize tax Payers dollars. Officials have been in talks with the federal government to fund this shelter. So we've been talking to FEMA, we've been talking to Secretary Mallorca, we've been talking to... Mayor Leeser says there are a lot of schools still available for purchase. They're still working to figure out the cost and working with the federal government, who likely will fund that. A preliminary injunction hearing over the floating barriers in the Rio Grande is set to take place in Tuesday, on Tuesday up in Austin. The hearing set to take place at 9 in the morning on August 22nd. The Justice Department asking a federal court here in Texas to block the construction of any new floating barriers. The DOJ also wants the state to remove the barriers in Eagle Pass. Governor Greg Abbott says the barriers are part of the state's effort to curb migration from the southern border. But the Justice Department says Texas installed them without authorization. The Maui Fire Department reports that fire activity is now limited to some isolated hotspots with much of the fires now contained at at least 85%. There are 114 confirmed fatalities. ABC's Melissa Adon reports that number is expected to rise as the search continues for the hundreds still unaccounted for. More than 2,000 buildings were destroyed on Maui, another 500 damaged as the long road to recovery begins. The governor promising criminal penalties for anyone trying to take advantage of the tragedy. The land in Lahaina is reserved for its people as they return and rebuild. Hawaii's first lady overcome with grief at the devastation. Tragically, it took less than a single day for us to lose Lahaina in the deadliest fire our country has seen in more than a century. Among the victims, Alfredo Galeanto, who made sure his family, tenants, and neighbors escaped the flames, but he stayed behind. I know that he was trying to fight the fire, fight the fire to save our home so we can come back to our home. Joy Richter, seen in this photo, clinging to the seawall with her dog Bacon and her father-in-law, describing the terror she endured. The smells, the sounds. The sound of a blazing fire is something I don't wish on anybody to ever hear or experience. The, the sounds I heard will never, ever, ever leave my head. Her father-in-law did not survive. 470 search and rescue workers and 40 search dogs are still combing through the debris. About 78% of the disaster area has been searched so far, yet hundreds of people are still unaccounted for. This process is agonizing for the families waiting for word from their loved ones and heartbreaking for those sifting through the debris. President Biden and the First Lady are scheduled to travel to Maui on Monday to see the devastation and meet with survivors and local leaders. Melissa Don, ABC News, Maui. And tonight at 10, we will introduce you to a local chef whose family member was missing after the wildfires. What he says you can do right now in San Antonio to help people like his family who have lost their homes. And tonight, millions of people in California bracing for Hurricane Hillary to make landfall with those in Southern California facing their first tropical storm in nearly 84 years. Crews in Orange County move rocks and sand to create barriers against the rising tides and to protect against uh, buildings on the coast. The hurricane is expected to first reach Mexico, then slowly make its way up the U.S. Along the path, massive flooding can be triggered with winds reaching up to 50 miles per hour, but it's not just California that will be bracing for the tropical storm. Arizona, Nevada also expected to be impacted. We are going to have flooding as, as usual. Anytime if they expect anything more than a half inch of rain, we start to have flooding in the desert. Those two states are expected to see up to three to six inches of rain. President Joe Biden said FEMA has supplies and help ready to help those folks with emergency response. 
We now have newly released body camera footage of the Utah man who threatened President Joe Biden and other officials on social media. It shows an encounter with police he had in 2018 where he allegedly threatened two Google Fiber employees. Utah officers can be heard spending more than 10 minutes talking to Craig Robertson, asking him to come outside and talk. Those two Google Fiber workers told police they knocked on his door saying they were going to work on the service pole in his backyard. That's when they say he threatened them with a gun and told them to leave. In his conversation with law enforcement, Robertson told them he's carried a gun for 45 years and keeps 20,000 rounds of ammunition in his basement. I answer the door with a firearm at all times. Why is that? Because I choose to. This is still America. It is America. That's right. I have the right to. He did eventually come out of the house and he apologized for his behavior. But five years later, just last week on August 9th, he was shot by FBI agents who were trying to arrest him for threatening gun violence against President Biden, other officials and the FBI. Health officials around the world are tracking a highly mutated coronavirus variant. It is called BA286. The World Health Organization started monitoring the variant worldwide this week so far. Only a handful of cases have been reported in four countries. That includes one case here in the U.S. in Michigan. Scientists say it's still unclear how transmissible the new strain is or how severe it will be. The CDC director, Dr. Mandy Cohen, says the variant shouldn't cause alarm and that the agency is more than prepared, more than ever, to respond to changes in that virus. Well, the Bear County Sheriff's Office is looking for recruits. We'll tell you about the hiring event they had this week and how the new money incentives are getting people curious about law enforcement careers. The Bear County Sheriff's Office holding its career fair this month, inviting visitors who are curious about starting careers in law enforcement. Yeah, they're hoping applicants will be drawn to recent pay raises just to prove that rival other law enforcement agencies. BCSO says detention deputies will receive a $2,000 signing bonus with a starting salary of $45,000 that increases each year they serve. During the event today at the TriPoint YMCA on North St. Mary Street, they offered on the go, on the spot testing rather, for the potential new recruits. Join us tonight at 10. We will explain another new change that may be drawing new applicants as well. All right, let's go outside with live cam here this evening. Plenty of sunshine, blue skies, helping those temperatures crank up yet again into the triple digits. Not breaking a record today, but sure is another toasty start to the weekend. And by the way, we are going to hold on to the triple digit trend as we wrap up the weekend tomorrow and head into Monday. But as we do that, we're monitoring the Gulf of Mexico. That tropical wave is still expected to move westward and approach South Texas, especially by Tuesday, that could fling some tropical moisture into at least parts of the region. So we'll monitor those rain chances as well. We'll get you the latest details and updates after the break. No records broken today. Bummer, but we are moving closer to those records. I want to break. I'm going all in on that 59 100 days. Let's go. We're, okay. we're getting close. I'll Honestly, match you. We could see a little bit of a break next week, depending on how those rain chances shake out. But that's not a bad idea because after that, it is still looking like we could find some more triple digits by late next week and into next weekend. So we'll talk all about it. But first, let's get you a look outside right now. 102, the official temperature over at SA International, by the way. Today Day marking the 54th triple digit day that we've seen so far this year. So yes, we will still tack on to that at some point in the days ahead, starting off with your Sunday. Tomorrow it is going to be another scorcher of a day. We're going to start off in the upper 70s with a few clouds. I think we see more sunshine already by 11 a.m. to noon, 94 degrees by lunchtime, and then notice by late afternoon. It's possible we see a few more clouds work back in. We've got that forecast high though pointed around 103 degrees. It is going to be a hot and dry day tomorrow and because of that you can see fire danger is still going to be elevated much like it's been
been the past several days, the past several weeks. So just something to keep in mind as we get ready to wrap up the weekend's plans. All right, now let's get to the potential changes, a potential weather pattern shift that tries to move into at least parts of South Texas early next week. Most of us still stay dry on Monday, another triple digit day expected. We've got a 10% chance for a very stray shower, especially later in the day. On Tuesday, a 30 to 40% potential at best right now for us here in San Antonio, and then isolated as we head into our Wednesday, all depending on how this tropical wave that we've been talking about over the past several days works its way through the Gulf of Mexico. So here's where it is right now, close to the Caribbean. It's going to move into the Gulf by this time tomorrow and then continue trekking over the warm waters as we head into Monday and Tuesday. By Tuesday morning, some of the tropical moisture that's associated with this low pressure system moves into at least parts of South Texas, but you can see this is our most consistent model that I'm showing you. It still keeps the heaviest and more beneficial rain just south of San Antonio. Better rain chances will be the farther south you go. You can see this deeper green color here where the better rain chances are closer to the Laredo area stretching over to Corpus Christi and the Rio Grande Valley. So we'll still need to monitor it and how it does track westward through the Gulf over the next few days. So definitely keep checking back for updates on that, especially by Tuesday and into Wednesday. Also is worth noting the National Hurricane Center still gives it a medium 50% chance for some tropical development. Regardless of development, though, the tropical moisture that could spark up those rain chances, that's really what we're going to be honing in on and looking at in the days ahead. But speaking of the tropics, I want to show you four other areas now out in the Atlantic Basin that the National Hurricane Center is also pinpointing. Tropics definitely waking up. This is Tropical Depression 6. It officially formed earlier this afternoon. It's supposed to be pretty short lived out there in the central Atlantic. There is another area to watch just off to its west near the Lesser Antilles has a medium chance for tropical development over the next seven days. And then two more disturbances out in the far eastern Atlantic, a low and then high chance for some tropical development. So also keep eyes on that as we head into next week as well. But bringing it back closer to home here in San Antonio, as that low pressure system does move into South Texas, expect it to get pretty breezy, especially on Tuesday. I think some winds out of the east upwards of at least 30 to 35 miles per hour will be possible in terms of those wind gusts. And then look at your temperatures. Added cloud cover should be able to move into at least parts of the area if we can find that when combined with that isolated to maybe widely scattered rain chance on Tuesday, especially it's possible we don't see that afternoon temperature reach 100 degrees for the first time this month. So at least we've got that going for us. Definitely check back in as we fine tune all those details over the next few days, but don't get used to it because it does look like more triple digits are in store into next weekend. We will take two days. We will, we will at take, this point. I see like a rain percentage on five of those. So no matter how small, I'm very excited. I like your optimism. Thank for you. You get excited about that tiny chance. I'm going to get excited <laughs> about the fact this is the last Saturday without college football. Yes. And our two local schools are ready to go. Yes. Can you believe it? I can't no, believe no. those words. It's finally <laughs> here. And coming up, we take you to College Football Media Day at UTSA and UIW. Plus, the Texans are making their debut at home for week two of the NFL preseason against Miami. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. The Cowboys' time on the West Coast comes to an end following tonight's Week 2 NFL preseason game against Seattle. The group accomplished a lot in the month-long stretch in Oxnard, California. Throughout camp, we need, we've been able to see a glimpse of what the Cowboys' offense will look like with head coach Mike McCarthy taking over the play, calling reins. According to QB Dak Prescott, McCarthy says it's better to have a fast play-in than a perfect play-in. And that aggressive approach is allowing Dak to thrive. Uh, yeah, it's been coming in pretty fast, and w with that uh, allows me to, to to change the cadence, allows me to get into different looks, allows me to uh, to, to kind of run the point guard of the ship with just the way that he's he's sending them in. 
Tonight is all about the young guys. Dallas and Seattle kick off at 9 o'clock in Washington. The Houston Texans are making their debut in front of their home crowd at NRG Stadium this afternoon against Miami. Head coach D'Amico Ryan said prior to the game he plans to get all players on the field as well as start quarterback C.J. Stroud as he did last week. Let's take a live look at that score between the Texans and Dolphins. It's the start of the fourth quarter. Miami has the 28-3 advantage. Shroud started the game seven for 12 for 60 yards. UTSA has retired its fall football camp, allowing the focus to fully shift to its week one matchup at Houston. It's not just any game, though. It's a rematch and a chance for the Roadrunners to avenge last year's season opening triple overtime loss in the Alamo Dome. This is a big year for UTSA. Their national prominence is on the rise and the curiosity is at an all time high. There's just excitement behind just going and be able to play somebody other than ourselves for, you know, the first time in a long time. Um, you know, I mean, just being able to, like I say, get back to the season and get back in the swing of things and, um, you know, being able to play somebody other than ourselves, is just, there's just excitement behind that. Um, you know, I mean, like you said, we played them last year down here and it wasn't the outcome that we wanted, but um, it's a new season now, you know what I mean? So we're just going to keep on preparing and do what we do and uh, go up there and play our brand of football. A mere 14 days until UTSA opens its season. Last year's FCS semifinalist Incarnate Word enters the 2023 college football season with a lot of turnover, plenty of talent, and even more to live up to. Former Texas A&M quarterback Zach Calzada will be taking on the UIW offense. His 10 starts at A&M in 2021 included a win over Alabama. He'll have wide receivers Brandon Porter, C.J. Hardy, and Jalen Campbell. Wide receiver play has never been an issue at UIW, you know, and that's that's just who we are. That's the identity that we've created. Um, and, and it's easy, you know, from the outside looking in to see you lose two All-Americans and it's like, OK, what's next? But, you know, you talk about a guy like Jalen Campbell, and in my opinion, um, last year could have went anywhere in the conference and started. Big praise from head coach Kent Killo during today's media day. This will be the Cardinals first season with Killo at the helm. He is the youngest head coach in Division One. Tonight, San Antonio FC is on their home pitch for a battle against Monterey Bay FC. SAFC is the team to beat right now. After Wednesday's win over RGV FC, the club is now in first place in the USL Championship Western Conference with 46 points and a 13-4 and 7 season record. They're also just one point behind Pittsburgh for the top spot in the league. We're now first in the table. We want to stay there and keep coasting. Uh, keep growing into playoffs and achieve our ultimate goals for this season. But that starts with uh, taking, taking care of teams that, you know, they're, they've been, they're eyeing us and look to turn the season around by getting a win here. Um, a three points for them would be massive and, you know, carry them going forward into the season. And we don't want that. We want that for ourselves. So it's about, you know, taking care of another, an, another opponent tomorrow and get another three points, get nine points in a week. That's incredible. And looking to keep building until the playoffs. Ja'Cory Hayes and FCFS AFC are in action beginning at 8 p.m. Tonight we'll provide you an update at 10 as well as highlights from the Texans matchup against Miami. I told you SAFC last week. I told you they're going to pick up these wins. Four straight wins. Yep. Knew it was Target coming. on their back now. <laughs> yes. Thanks, Mary. We'll be right back. Traffic update. The major road closures continue along 1604 and Northwest Military Highway. A press release from TxDOT says it's part of the Loop 1604 North Expansion Project. From both directions, the Northwest Military Highway exit and entrance ramps are closed. That includes the turnarounds. Law enforcement will keep directing traffic away from the area as construction crews work on setting beams for that new bridge. As a reminder, the closure will be active until Monday morning at five o'clock. Yikes. Yikes is right. All right, this is yikes too. Yeah. 
Have you ever wanted to be an actor, Tim? Sea World San Antonio looking for some scare actors for Hallow Scream. If you're looking to make some money this spooky season, you can audition for the park. I'm too scary already. <laughs> this video is from last year's Hollow Scream. From now until August 27th, you can try to be a zombie or a monster. For more information, just look for this article on ksat.com. Let's get the scary stuff underway. Scary season, Courtney. Yeah, it's time to get the skeletons season. out of the closet. Yep, it, uh, more triple jam. digits, still kind of scary, but we'll monitor uh, a few rain chances into early next week. That's if they didn't melt up in the attic. We'll see you back here for the night beat tonight at 10. <laughs> you won't be too scary, promise. <laughs> Live from Case at 12, the night beat starts right now. Up first and new on the night beat, a 16 year old boy is dead tonight after he drowned on the Comal River in New Braunfels just a few hours ago. Police were called to the tube chute around three after the teen disappeared while swimming with his family above the chute dam. The boy's body found near the dam just before 530 this evening and was pulled from the water. He was given CPR until EMS got there to take him to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. The boy's name has not been released out of respect to his family. Police do not believe foul play was involved and are investigating what led up to that drowning. We now know the name of the man that was hit and killed on the I-35 access road earlier this week. The medical examiner says 26-year-old Brandon Hudson was hit by a vehicle late Wednesday night on the interstate's access road between Shepherd and Lucky near Lytle. Hudson was taken to a nearby hospital where he would later die. The driver that hit him is still on the run, and right now there is still no description of the vehicle to work with. In Hawaii, search crews are about halfway finished with their weekend recovery mission. At last check, the death toll from the Maui wildfires now stands at 114. Still so many people missing or unaccounted for. Governor Josh Green says the rebuild will take years and billions of dollars, but he promises the island will be restored to what many people want. Yeah, and here in San Antonio, a chef tells us his family lost everything in those Maui wildfires, and now he's leaning on our community for help. Yeah, his restaurant, Best Quality Daughter, now serving up two specials to help support the family who is now homeless. The night team's Avery Everett sat down with the chef, who said San Antonio is already stepping up. Some fried spam. Handmade. And then from there, we just roll. With Hawaii in mind. I just kept getting my call dropped every time I called them, so... Panic mode set in. I didn't know what to do. Chef Christopher Busa at Best Quality Daughter was born and raised on the Hawaiian Islands. As the recent wildfires swept across Maui, communication was lost with his family. They couldn't call in or out of Maui. Relief that they were okay. There's a Brittany in them house. And then heartbreak to hear their home was lost. And that's our cottage. The Busa family took this video earlier today showing what's left of their home. It, it hurts, uh, it hurts deep, you know. It, there's no place like being home. Best Quality Daughter is hoping a new fundraiser will help the Booza family push forward. Hopefully it can provide them even just a little tiny bit of relief. Your spam will be. Through the rest of August, all earnings from these two dinner specials will go directly to the Boozas. It's going to a family that we know and care for. Sweet soy, we go over the top. Spam Asubi and a new My Guy cocktail. Dishes designed by the team to honor and help the Booza family on Hawaii. Everybody was just behind me 100%. They have our furikake. Even an ocean away. Oh man, it's everything to me. Booza says his San Antonio community is stepping up to help. The moment we hit the ground running, we just, San Antonio came in and just started pouring their love for us. These two specials will run through the end of August. For other ways that you can help Best Quality Daughter and the Booza family, head on over to KSAT.com. I'm Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Avery. So good to hear that people are stepping up to help out with, of course, those devastating wildfires over there in Maui. Back here at home, of course, nothing to that extent or anything even close to that, but we have had to deal with elevated fire conditions over the past several weeks, thanks to breezy winds, especially in the afternoon and evening, the humidity dropping into the afternoon as well, and of course, just the dry grasses and vegetation that we still have in place. So with more dry conditions expected into Sunday and Monday, no surprise, 
areas here, fire danger will continue to stay high across the vast majority of South Central Texas, and we're still going to contend with the heat, especially as we head into Sunday and Monday. That time frame more triple digits expected into the afternoon hours here in San Antonio. But at the same time, we're also monitoring the Gulf of Mexico. That tropical wave is expected to move westward and slingshot some tropical moisture into parts of South Texas, especially by Tuesday. So that means for at least parts of our region, we do have some rain chances in the forecast by Tuesday and early Wednesday. We'll get you a look at what that may look like into early next week in just a few. Thanks, Mia. We'll see you then. Today, the Bear County Sheriff's Office holding a career fair, hoping to attract some new recruits. This comes weeks after a historic pay raise for the department and a new program was launched. Sheriff Javier Salazar says the, tells the night teams, Lee Waldman, this fair is a step in the right direction in their efforts to fill their open positions. The TriPoint YMCA was filled with members of the Bear County Sheriff's Office today and many who'd like to join them. Ever since I was little, I always told myself I'm going to be a cop and a Marine. And I already did one of those. Gage Mills took the first step towards fulfilling a childhood dream. They have a mixture of everything from SWAT to working in the jail. Saturday's BCSO career fair put on display all different departments, including its special emergency response team, SWAT, cadets, and dispatch. BCSO hopefuls can get a leg up on their new careers with written and physical tests given. Sheriff Javier Salazar says there was a good turnout today, but he's not surprised given the massive pay increase passed by county commissioners on August 1st. Young people are just not flocking to law enforcement uh, agencies' doors, knocking them down, trying to start their career. So we've got to be imaginative, but that's what we're doing here. Now incoming officers can earn a starting salary of $61,500 rather than the previous $58,704. If you start out in the jail, your starting salary would be $45,000 instead of just shy of $42,000. The change is needed given the roughly 250 open positions currently at the county jail. Every major law enforcement agency in the state is dealing with the same thing, but we're taking a more proactive approach. Part of that positive approach launching the Straight to the Streets program. These folks can come here, get their foot in the door, and start working in the jail, and then almost immediately, as soon as we give a test for Straight to the Streets, they can take that test and cross over. For Mills, the possibility is one that makes this career move even more exciting. I know it's kind of limited spots for it, but I'm absolutely going to try to actually go straight to the streets. Part of what makes this straight to the streets program so enticing is that people without a law enforcement background can roll in it, go through the academy and be working as a Bear County deputy in about nine months without ever having to work at the jail. BCSO is having another career fair next month. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Lee. A man who refused to leave a Converse bar last night ended up getting shot by Bear County deputies. It all happened in the 8,000 block of FM 78. Just around midnight, a security guard told deputies he saw a man with a gun in his waistband and asked him to leave. The man refused, so security called BCSO for help. They pointed the man out to deputies when they arrived. And that's when the guy took off in a car with a man and woman inside. Deputies chasing that vehicle down, and when they pulled it over, Two men ran off. The woman who was driving stayed behind. Deputies chasing those men and ordered one to drop a weapon. Instead, that suspect allegedly turned around and pointed the gun at deputies who shot him. He was taken to the hospital and charged with evading arrest in a possession of a stolen firearm. The woman and other man who ran from deputies were also arrested. A man's in the hospital after police say he was shot in the leg and then drove through a McDonald's drive through Police responded to the restaurant in the 7200 block of Wurzbach Road just after 3 this morning. When they got there, the man refused to give a shooter description. Police are still investigating that incident. Well, the newest class of Roadrunners at UTSA is getting ready for the new semester, with the university making sure they get the supplies they need. For the second year in a row, the university opened its move-in market at the school, which gives students donated and gently used items. It's all free, and the San Antonio Food Bank even steps in to help. Last year, the market received almost 6,000 donations to help more than 700 students. All the free help is to make sure that they succeed in those college careers. 
Turning our attention now, a preliminary hearing over the floating buoys on the Rio Grande will happen on Tuesday in Austin. The Justice Department asking the federal court there to block the construction of any new floating barriers. The DOJ also wants Texas to remove the floating barriers that are in place near Eagle Pass. Governor Abbott says the buoys are part of the state's efforts to curb migration from the southern border and contends the measure is constitutional. But the DOJ says Texas was not authorized to install those barriers. Still ahead on the night beat, a troubling trend stealing from San Antonio parks, theft and vandalism. What the San Antonio River Foundation says about the string of crime all happening within weeks of each other. Plus, a popular Chinese buffet appears to have had its last health inspection. We go behind the kitchen door to learn about the next steps for that business. And bracing for impact, Hurricane Hillary barreling towards Southern California right now. Next on the night beat, how millions of people there are preparing for the landfall of the first hurricane in decades. Hurricane Hillary at one point, a dangerous Category 4 storm has weakened to a Category 2 as it heads towards Southern California tonight. Governor, uh, Governor Gavin Newsom issuing a state of emergency for much of that region. Millions across the southwest are now bracing for strong winds, heavy rains, and potentially life-threatening flooding. As ABC's Lyle LeMoyes reports, Hillary is on track to be the first tropical storm to hit the state in more than 25 years. Millions across the southwest are bracing for Hillary. We want you to be safe. With potentially dangerous weather conditions on the horizon, including high winds and flooding, power outages. Video from the International Space Station shows the powerful storm churning in the Pacific. Already impacting parts of Mexico, Hillary now headed towards Southern California, a tropical storm warning in effect for Los Angeles and San Diego. What we know for certain is that there will be sustained high winds of up to 50 miles per hour and that there will be enough rain to flood low-lying areas. We continue to ask people to shelter uh, in place during the storm. In Orange County, crews are busy building massive sand berms to protect beaches. Newport Beach is providing residents with sand bags. We're just preparing for the Hurricane Hillary that's coming into uh, Southern California. And in San Clemente, workers are laying down plastic tarps to help guard against mudslides. The San Bernardino County Sheriff's Office issuing evacuations for several areas, and officials are advising everyone to avoid travel. If you do not need to be on the roadways, we are asking you to postpone any of your non-essential travel until the peak of the storm passes. The southwest could see heavy rainfall through early next week. A high risk of flash flooding from Palm Springs all the way up to Death Valley, where we could be talking three to six inches of rain or more. Parts of California, Nevada and Arizona possibly getting more than a year's worth of rain in just 48 hours. Lionel Moyes, ABC News, New York. As they prepare for all that rain here, we had hopes for getting some rain from a yep. tropical system in the Gulf that 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 is kind of dwindling. It, hopes? They're still there. It's an isolated okay. to widely scattered chance by Tuesday. And we really still will get a clearer picture of this, especially tomorrow evening after that wave actually moves into the Gulf of Mexico. I think better chances are going to be south of San Antonio, but still there is the chance that we see at least a few downpours out there, especially by Tuesday. We'll talk all about that in just a second. First, though, I want to get you a look at today in the back half of the weekend as you get ready to plan out your Sunday. And then we'll talk about those changes into early next week. 103 degrees, the high here in San Antonio, seven degrees above the average, but you can see yet again all of South Central Texas once again reaching up into the triple digits. Today, the 21st consecutive triple digit day that we've seen here in town, that now ties the record for the highest number of consecutive triple digit days. And by the way, we are going to break that as we head into Sunday because we've got another forecast high in the low 100s. So here's your case at 12 hour forecast tomorrow morning, upper 70s expected, 86 by 10 a.m. 94 already by noon with plenty of sunshine. It's possible we see a few more clouds, especially by late afternoon, but you can see there's that forecast high once again pointed around 103 winds of the out of the southeast at about 5 to 15 miles per hour, generally gusting upwards of about 20 to 25, especially as we head into the evening hours. All right, now let's talk about those potential pattern changes as we head into next week for us here in San Antonio. Just dry and hot out there 
tomorrow. Most of us stay dry again on Monday. Only a 10% chance for a stray shower, especially as we head into the later portions of the day. Better chances of finding that the farther south and east that you go. Into Tuesday, we've got about a 30 to 40% potential to once again find some isolated to widely scattered showers and storms. But you can see the heaviest rain is expected to stay south of San Antonio. I want to go ahead and show you the most consistent model that we've been watching with the trends of what this area of low pressure could do here over the next 48 to 72 hours. It moves into the eastern Gulf of Mexico by tomorrow evening, and then it will continue to track westward and approach South Texas by early Tuesday morning. That's when we're expecting some of that tropical moisture and rain making moisture to move into deep South Texas, and that will continue to push farther westward overnight Tuesday and into early Wednesday. Now here's a look at potential rainfall patterns. What we could see out there by the time all is said and done, you can see still the heaviest and the most beneficial rain is expected to fall south of San Antonio, closer to the Rio Grande Valley, closer to Corpus Christi, stretching over to Laredo. However, it is possible that we can still tap in to some of that activity. Better chances are just going to be across our far southern counties. It also is worth noting the National Hurricane Center is monitoring the western Gulf and that tropical wave for potential tropical development have about a medium 50% chance as we head into early next week because the Gulf of Mexico waters are so warm. Regardless of tropical development, though, the biggest thing we're going to be monitoring is exactly where that deeper tropical moisture can track because that will determine where most of the rain falls. Also want to show you what's left out there in the Atlantic Basin. The tropics are definitely waking up. This is Tropical Depression 6 that is near the Lesser Antilles. There's another little wave just off to its west that has a high chance of development over the next week. Same with another little disturbance out there in the central Atlantic as well as a fifth little system out there coming off the western coast of Africa. It also has a low chance of development as well. So certainly a lot to monitor over the next week or so. By the way, with the added cloud cover on Tuesday and Wednesday, it is possible that our afternoon temperatures don't climb above 100 degrees for the first time this month. So we also have that to look forward to, and it will be a bit breezy out there on Tuesday as well. So of course, we'll continue to keep you updated in the days ahead on air online. And of course, that KSAT Weather Authority app. I'm very excited for you that you get to be tracking weather and not just say, I don't know how else to say hot. Not just the heat and the drought. Very yes, happy for you. Hopefully we can get some rain. Yes. Thanks, Courtney. You're welcome. <laughs> I guess we'll keep hope alive. Yes. All right. Even Lots you. to digest from the Texans' mm -hmm. latest preseason game, Mary. That's right. There's a lot of good, some bad, and plenty of takeaways from Houston's week two performance against Miami, plus insight from UTSA Football Media Day coming up after the break. Hey, Brandon. Um, Rashad with all San Antonio news stations. Um, you know, you coming in, being a single digit guy last year, being number nine, but getting bumped up to number two. How does that, how does that feel? What is that, what is that really, what do you think that says about you and, you know, I mean, your role in this program? Uh, I feel like my guys trust me a lot, you know, just making the switch from being number nine to number two, being in the team's area code. Um, I feel like that's pretty, that's pretty big for the city. Um, and I feel like my guys trust me enough to get me bumped up to that. Never mind his cybersecurity degree, Judson alum Rashad Wisdom has a future in journalism, asking all the right questions to teammate Brandon Brown at UTSA Media Day. It's time for Big Board Sports. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. The Texans and Dolphins squared off in week two of the NFL preseason and as expected, rookie quarterback C.J. Stroud was much sharper compared to his debut last week. Stroud played the entire first half and was 7 of 12 for 60 yards and helped the Texans to a field goal in his second drive. That ended up being the only scoring for Houston as Miami won the game by a 28 to 3 final. Things started off strong for Houston though. Denzel Perryman picked off Tua Tungavailoa on the first play play of the game, but when it was all said and done, the Texans defense allowed 205 rushing yards in the loss.
Yeah, with the run defense overall, it's not representative of who we need to be on defense, right? It, and it all starts with the fundamentals first. First, we have to set the edge. The ball got outside way too many times, and it comes down to tackling. The tackling was not good enough. I'm taking steps every, every week, so I'm really excited for the future, man. And um, I actually appreciate the mistakes and the lessons learned because you don't really get them anywhere else. Um, you got to learn and you got to have scars. So for me, I mean, I, I thank God for them, even though they might not look good on, on TV or look good to other people or uh, whatever the case may be. But um, at the end of the day, man, it's about uh, what God's plan is for my life and, and, and this team. The second overall pick, Stroud, hasn't been announced as the Texans starter, but he started both preseason games and works almost exclusively with the first team in practice, making it seem more likely he will replace Davis Mills this season. The Cowboys' time on the West Coast comes to an end following their game tonight. Dallas versus Seattle in week two of the preseason. No Cowboys starters in the mix. An updated score of this game, not what you see on the screen. It's 17 Seahawks, 7 Cowboys. We'll have more on this game tomorrow on Instant Replay. UTSA has retired its fall football camp, allowing the focus to fully shift to its week one matchup at Houston. It's not just any game, though. It's a rematch and a chance for the Roadrunners to avenge last year's season opening triple overtime loss in the Alamo Dome. This is a big year for UTSA. Their national prominence is on the rise and the curiosity is at an all time high. There's just excitement behind just going and be able to play somebody other than ourselves for, you know, the first time in a long time. Um, you know, I mean, just being able to, like I said, get back to the season and get back in the swing of things and, um, you know, being able to play somebody other than ourselves, is just, there's just excitement behind that. Um, you know, I mean, like you said, we played them last year down here and it wasn't the outcome that we wanted, but um, it's a new season now, you know what I mean? So we're just going to keep on preparing and do what we do and uh, go up there and play our brand of football. There is a mere 14 days until the UTSA football season begins. Let's talk last year's FCS semifinalist Incarnate Word now. First year head coach Clint Killo expressing his confidence in the team's wideout depth during today's media day. UIW enters the 2023 college football season with Texas A&M transfer Zach Calzada at QB and returning receivers Brandon Porter, CJ Hardy and Jalen Campbell, just to name a few. Wide receiver play has never been an issue at UIW, you know, and that's that's just who we are. That's the identity that we've created. Um, and, and it's easy, you know, from the outside looking in to see you lose two All-Americans and it's like, okay, what's next? But, you know, you talk about a guy like Jalen Campbell, and in my opinion, um, last year could have went anywhere in the conference and started. Speaking of, this will be the Cardinals' first season with Killo at the helm, who is the youngest head coach in Division One. UIW's first home game is September 23rd. And later in the show, Major League Baseball action with the Rangers and Astros, respectively, and even more. All right, we'll look forward to it. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Coming up next on the night feed, a low score leads to some interesting accusations from a manager of a Mexican restaurant. We go behind the kitchen door to find out what went wrong. The manager of a Mexican restaurant claimed the inspector wasn't feeling their energy when she gave them a low score last month. And a Northside Chinese restaurant undergoing some big changes after their inspection. Here's a look at what was happening behind their kitchen doors. China Harbor, located in the 17,000 block of Highway 281 North, got an 80 on their July inspection. It also appears to have been their final inspection. The business was closed this week when we stopped by and crews were clearing the place out. How long have you guys been working? For about a week now. The inspection report stated the business was going through an ownership change. A sign on the front door says they closed at the end of July and a new seafood and sushi buffet will open in its place later this year. <laughs> Alamo Cafe in the 14,000 block of 281 North earned an 82 on their July inspection. Equipment was dirty with grease and debris. There was mold on surfaces where glasses are stored and some caulking was also moldy. Workers were caught adjusting hats and blowing their noses, then continuing to work without hand washing. One worker handled food with their bare hands. 
The inspector gave them 10 days to clean things up or face a reinspection. El Charo de Alisco at 8388 Marbach comes in with a 75. Food in a walk in cooler was way too warm at 70 degrees. Other foods on the cook's line were also above temp. They were all put on ice. Employees didn't wash their hands. Those unwashed bare hands were then seen touching tacos that were served to customers. Manager Miguel Garcia came outside to talk. He claimed the inspector just wasn't feeling their vibe that day. She wasn't low key, like feeling our side, like okay. our energy. So I mean, that was, I don't know if it was personal, but okay. it was on her. But you guys are doing a better job, you'd oh, say? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Taqueria Nuevo Vallarta in the 3400 block of Roosevelt also earned a 75. They had to throw out food cooked the day before because it was too warm. Food that was above temp in a reach and cooler under the grill was also tossed out. Knives in the rack they were stored on were dirty with food debris. Workers weren't washing hands or changing gloves and the cook was touching food with their bare hands. The inspector left a long list of items to be corrected for a reinspection. For Behind the Kitchen Door, Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. Clear the energy here. Yes. Scientists around the world are tracking a new mutated COVID-19 variant. Yeah, the strain is called BA286, and it's been under a special watch by the World Health Organization since Thursday. So far, only a handful of cases have been reported in four countries, including here in the U.S. after one case was reported in Michigan. Doctors don't know how transmissible this new strain is or how powerful it could become. But CDC director uh, Dr. Mandy Cohen says the variant should not be cause for alarm and that the agency is more prepared than ever to respond to changes in the virus. Around America, lawsuits by two California men who accused Michael Jackson of sexually abusing them when they were children will be allowed to resume. The two men are suing companies owned by the late singer. They claim employees of MJJ Productions and MJJ Ventures were complicit in the alleged abuse and claim the employees owed a, quote, duty of care to the boys and failed to take steps to prevent Jackson's alleged actions. Michael Jackson's estate denies all the abuse claims. The lawsuits were first filed in 2013 and 14, but were dismissed in recent years after a judge ruled the companies had no legal duty to protect the boys from Jackson. Now it's back in court again. A teen is dead and eight other people were sent to the hospital after a shooting erupted at a West Philadelphia block party. It happened after midnight this morning on the west side of the city. The person who died was 19 year old man. The other victims ages range between 17 and 51. They're all listed in critical condition. Almost 40 shots were fired at the scene and police still don't know what led to that gunfire and no arrests have been made in the shooting. Still no end in sight to the strike between the Writers Guild of America and major Hollywood studios. That strike began more than three months ago, shutting down most TV and movie productions in the U.S. and delaying many upcoming movies and shows. In a message to members, the Guild confirmed the two sides plan to meet again next week. The WGA has held talks each of the last four days with the Alliance of Motion Picture and TV Producers, but the two sides apparently remain very far apart on several of the major issues. A local park seeing a spike in crime with the SA River Foundation and police are doing about the problem next on the night. Okay, we told you about the 3D model of Confluence Park being stolen a little more than a week ago. But that's just the latest thing that's been stolen from a local park. Yeah. The night team's John Paul Barajas reports plaques and an interactive microphone have all been stolen in the last few months. A 3D model, an interactive microphone, and two bronze plaques all stolen in a matter of weeks. To the community, they were a great value. As far as the value of street value and cost of, of what you could get when you sell it for steel or something like that, extremely, extremely minimal. Uh, financially, it's a significant impact because, of course, we're going to manage that feature or that asset back to its original design. And Tommy Mitchell with the San Antonio River Authority says he's not sure if people are stealing for the sake of selling the items or just to cause damage. If we don't take care of the public art in our community, then it's all going to be locked up. It's going to be in museums and private residences, and then none of that's a loss for all of us. Freda Silixen serves as the executive director of the San Antonio River Foundation. He tells us the stream mic at San Pedro Creek Culture Park has also been vandalized multiple times. Now, after several repairs, it's missing. 
When people come up to the microphone and speak into the microphone, their sounds trigger lighting. The artist's goal is to grow engagement and perception of nature. The 3D model at Confluence Park is also art with a purpose. And they would see the path of the water and how the park directs water to certain areas so we can capture it and reuse it. Every field trip, they stop there. And you know, tens of thousands of students have come through here since 2018. As for the stolen plaques, they commemorate the Bear County Commissioner's Court for their funding to create a spot of park. Both Tillickson and Mitchell say the people responsible are not just stealing from parks, but San Antonio residents and visitors. I want you to appreciate your own backyard, your community. Uh, you know, I mean, think about the impact that you not only have uh, with stealing this piece or the damage that you may cause, but what is the impact to the community and the culture? Again, that was John Paul Barajas reporting. San Antonio police are aware of all three incidents. Meanwhile, both the San Antonio River Authority and Foundation say they're looking to replace the stolen items and they're also planning to add more security cameras to their parks. All right, let's go back outside with live cam here tonight. Temperature still in the low 90s here in San Antonio. All right, so earlier we were talking about how our high of 103 today was the 21st consecutive day where our afternoon temperature has been at least 100 degrees. But here's a check in on where we stand for the entire year. Today also marked the 54th triple digit day, and we are still expecting a few more as we head into the back half of the weekend and even into to next week as well. So here's your Sunday again, upper 70s expected 94 by lunchtime 103. The high temperature still triple digits on Monday 103 degrees expected. But as we try to find some of that tropical moisture move into parts of South Central Texas, when we combine that with the added cloud cover that we'll likely find as well, temperatures might actually not reach the century mark Tuesday and into Wednesday. But we are expecting more triple digits on the back side of that. So we'll talk about that plus these rain chances a little bit more in depth after the break. Well, I just think it's a big deal that we've got even the smallest rain chances, and I know that it's just been the historical heat that we've been talking about. But I'm ready to break all the records. Yeah, we're close. I we mean, got if, close last year. If we've been really into it, doing all of the things, we might as well get credit. <laughs> That's for right. It, right. We didn't last year. We gave up. We, we were very close. <laughs> second place for the highest number of triple-digit days. Hey, and we might be pretty close to that again this year, especially how depending on how late next week and next weekend all shakes out because yes, we still have more triple digits in the forecast. So let's get you a look at those weather headlines and what we'll still be monitoring into early next week. More heat expected tomorrow and into Monday, all as we monitor that tropical wave moving into and through the Gulf of Mexico. And that is what could fling in some additional tropical moisture into South Texas, especially on Tuesday. And that's when we'll be monitoring those rain chances that work back into our forecast here in the San Antonio area. So here's the overall setup. Yes, it has been so hot over the past several days, all thanks to our heat high pressure. Watch what happens, though, in the upper levels of the atmosphere here, especially as we head into Monday. That's going to work its way farther northward. And as it does so, it loosens its grip ever so slightly on us here in South Central Texas and opens the door for that tropical wave to approach deep South Texas. And you can see this green color here. That's the tropical moisture that's going to filter in a Along with it. Now, what we'll need to monitor just how far northward can that tropical moisture make it? As of right now, most of us dry again on Monday, a 10% chance for a stray shower, especially later in the day, a 30 to 40% potential on Tuesday. That's going to be the best time frame to find some isolated to widely scattered showers and storms. And then sure, maybe a lingering shower or two possible, especially into early Wednesday as that low pressure system starts to weaken and move farther off to the west. So here again is our most consistent model. The trends that we've been watching over the past several days for who could find the heavier and more beneficial rainfall. You can see it is not looking to be a widespread heavy rainfall event for us here in South Central Texas. Unfortunately, better chances of finding some rain still look to set well off to our south here in San Antonio. And also, unfortunately, as we overlay the latest drought monitor that we got in on Thursday, that 
rain will help out for places like Laredo stretching over to Corpus Christi and Brownsville, but the worst drought that we still do have continues to sit across portions of the hill country and for us here in San Antonio. So hopefully in the weeks ahead, we will be able to find a more significant pattern change for us that will allow us to get some more beneficial rain over those areas. But as we were talking about maybe a slight break in the triple digits, especially Tuesday and Wednesday in the added cloud cover that is expected to work our direction. But then after that, that low pressure moves westward. We see more sunshine return and we are expecting more triple digits into Thursday and Friday and even into early next weekend. So we'll continue to keep you updated on that. All right, we've already talked about what's happening out there in the Atlantic Basin, but I did want to touch on Hurricane Hillary yet again. Right now it is a category one hurricane as it does approach Baja California could make landfall there as early as tomorrow and then start to work its way into Southern California. This is the latest flooding risk issued by the Weather Prediction Center. Some areas could see a year's worth of rain in a matter of hours, three to six inches of rain, localized 10 plus, certainly possible, especially near Palm Springs and just east of Los Angeles. So certainly something that we're going to continue to keep eyes on for friends and family out that way over the next 48 to 72 hours. But until then, we are in the low 90s right now here in San Antonio and surrounding areas. Upper 70s expected tomorrow morning, flipping around to about 103 degrees. That forecast high here in town. Same into our Monday. Tuesday, we mentioned this a little bit earlier as well. It's also going to be a breezy day with that low pressure system passing off to our south. I think winds will be out of the east, gusting upwards of 30 to 35 miles per hour. And then they'll start to settle down again into Wednesday with those triple digits returning by late next week. Let's go for 59. Let's go for 60. If you're not your first, you're last. Let's right? do it. Let's break it. <laughs> Thanks, Look at Tim rooting for the heat. Never thought I'd I see that. I just want to break the record. Man. You're a winner, I feel like Tim. I'm here. I need to be a part of this. <laughs> He's a winner. I'm going to brag. You know who else is winning? Who? SAFC. Mm. Yeah, we're so proud of that, Mary. Yes, we are. Um, SAFC is on a four-game win streak, but can they keep the good times rolling today? And the Rangers and Astros on a bit of a losing skid coming up. The AL West leading Texas Rangers are up against the NL Central leading Milwaukee Brewers. Not the outcome the Rangers wanted. They dropped game two of the series six to one. The bats just couldn't wake up. A lot of swings and misses today. We, we got to find a way to do a little better job of putting the ball in play. I think we had 18 strikeouts today, and, you know, that's probably not going to work, as you saw. And uh, so anyway, we, we need to flush this and then, you know, come back and uh, bounce back and, and get back to who we are. And that's doing some little things there, like maybe putting it in play. The series finale is tomorrow with first pitch at 135 in the afternoon. The Houston Astros hosting Seattle in game two of their three game series. Jose Altuve in the fifth inning, the newest member of the 2000 hit club after that line drive to left field. He was thrown out trying to stretch the single into a double. The Mariners, though, walk away from this one victorious 10 to 3. Houston will try to avoid getting swept tomorrow with righty Hunter Brown on the mound. San Antonio FC hosted Monterey Bay FC tonight at Toyota Field. The match ended in a scoreless draw. So SCFC, who came into the day atop the USL Western Conference, walks away with one point while Sacramento Republic won their match. So they regain the top spot. More on this tomorrow on IR. Unfortunate outcome, but it's OK. They walk away with the point. Exactly. Zero, zero, and they still get a point. I do yes. not understand. I don't yeah. get it. I don't get it. <laughs> I saw the zero zero. I looked straight at him. Okay, anyway. Eyes about rolled out of my head. Thanks, Mary. I like it, though, so that's what matters. We'll be right back. <laughs> We are now less than a week away from the 2023 KSAT Pigskin Classic. Tickets now on sale on our website, ksat.com. Just scan the QR code on your screen to see all of our ticket options. It kicks off Friday the 25th 
followed by our triple header Saturday the 26th. And we'll be there. We will. We'll see you there next week. And our KSAC community team also excited to collect donations for the San Antonio Food Bank during all four of those games next Friday and Saturday. Just scan that QR code on your screen right now to make a donation, or you can just head to our website, KSAT.com, to see the full list of the items the food bank says they need the most. All right, one final look at your seven day forecast. Still hot tomorrow into Monday. We'll monitor the chance for some rain on Tuesday and into early Wednesday, and then more triple digits take us into next weekend. You know what this was? The last time we're on time on a Saturday, probably until after oh. Christmas. But we oh, have football. But we have football. We do it's have that. It. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. It is the last weekend before New Braunfels students go back to school and it ended with a 16 year old boy drowning. Coming up, we're going to tell you what police are now saying about this incident. If we don't take care of the public art in our community, then it's all going to be locked up. It's going to be in museums and private residences and then none of that's a loss for all of us. More items from local parks being stolen and vandalized. We'll take a look at what San Antonio police are going to start doing differently to prevent these situations. And let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. It is under 80 degrees. Great start to the day. How hot is it going to be for the rest of the weekend? What about the first week of school for so many students in our area? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning. It is 6 o'clock. It is Sunday. Good August morning. 20th. Thank you so much for starting your Sunday with us. So yesterday, did you make it out and about? I did. I was outside. She says with a, a frown. Well, I was just like miserable. It was so hot. And we were walking and we were in Southtown for dinner and we walked through a parking lot. I was just like, and there was a for bunch. For dinner. So what time are we talking here? Oh, my. Our version of dinner. Like 3 o'clock? 4 o'clock uh, So like prime heating hours yeah, kind of stuff? Yeah, and, and the asphalt was just so hot. And there's so many people outside waiting. I was like, how are people doing Oof. it? I know, how are we? Guys. How? But hey, Sarah, small chance for rain in yeah, a couple Tuesday. of days? Okay. Tuesday is a day that some folks around South Central Texas will be getting some rain. Here in San Antonio, though, we're going to get a small chance of rain, but the heaviest of the rainfall is going to be south of the area. So we've got a lot to talk about in the forecast. But first, I want to get you through your day today because it's going to be another hot day and we definitely want to take those heat and fire precautions uh, carefully today. All right, outside right now in San Antonio, 80 degrees. New Braunfels at 78. It's 78 in Seguin. Bernie, you're at 72 this morning and 75 in Kerrville. Right now, the humidity is high, but it will be coming down this afternoon. That'll aid in the fire danger. We've got 
moderate fire danger through most of San Antonio, but in areas uh, north of 410 up toward uh, the hill country, that's where we've got some higher fire danger, more brush out there as well as near to Del Rio too. So looking at today's forecast, here's what we're going to be seeing. Mostly sunny skies throughout most of the day. In the afternoon, a little bit of extra cloud cover. 103 for the high temperature and winds are actually going to be changing from the east today at 10 to 15 miles per hour. And the reason for the change in the winds is because a low pressure system will be approaching from the Gulf of Mexico. That low pressure system, it's going to be giving us a chance, at least a chance for some rain on Tuesday. Those details ahead in just a few minutes. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, we now know a 16 year old boy dead after drowning in the Comal in New Braunfels. Police called out to the tube shoot around 3 p.m. yesterday after the teen who disappeared while swimming with his family above the chute dam. The boy's body found near the dam just before 5.30 pulled from the water, given CPR until EMS got there to take him to the hospital. That's where he was pronounced dead. The boy's name has not yet been released out of respect for his family. Police don't believe foul play was involved, but right now they're still investigating, trying to figure out what exactly led up to this drowning. A hearing over the floating barriers in the Rio Grande is set to take place on Tuesday in Austin. The Justice Department is asking federal court in Texas to block the construction of any new floating barriers. The DOJ also wants the state to remove the barriers in Eagle Pass. Governor Greg Abbott says the barriers are part of the state's efforts to curb migration from the southern border. But the Justice Department says Texas installed them without authorization. We now know the name of the man who was hit and killed on I-35 on the access road earlier this week. So the medical examiner says 26-year-old Brandon Hudson was hit by a vehicle late Wednesday night on the interstate's access road between Shepherd and Lucky near Lytle. Hudson was taken to a nearby hospital. That's where he was pronounced dead. Now the driver who hit him still on the loose. Investigators still working, trying to figure out who exactly is responsible. And we told you about the 3D model of Confluence Park being stolen a little more than a week ago. And that's just the latest thing that's been stolen from our local parks. John Paul Barajas reports plaques and an interactive microphone have also been stolen in the last few months. A 3D model, an interactive microphone, and two bronze plaques all stolen in a matter of weeks. To the community, they were a great value. As far as the value of street value and cost of, of what you could get when you sell it for steel or something like that, extremely, extremely minimal. Uh, financially, it's a significant impact because, of course, we're going to manage that feature or that asset back to its original design. And Tommy Mitchell with the San Antonio River Authority says he's not sure if people are stealing for the sake of selling the items or just to cause damage. If we don't take care of the public art in our community, then it's all going to be locked up. It's going to be in museums and private residences, and then none of that's a loss for all of us. Freda Silixen serves as the executive director of the San Antonio River Foundation. He tells us the stream mic at San Pedro Creek Culture Park has also been vandalized multiple times. Now, after several repairs, it's missing. When people come up to the microphone and speak into the microphone, their sounds trigger lighting. The artist's goal is to grow engagement and perception of nature. The 3D model at Confluence Park is also art with a purpose. And they would see the path of the water and how the park directs water to certain areas so we can capture it and reuse it. Every field trip, they stop there. And you know, tens of thousands of students have come through here since 2018. As for the stolen plaques, they commemorate the Bear County Commissioner's Court for their funding to create a spot of park. Both Tillickson and Mitchell say the people responsible are not just stealing from parks, but San Antonio residents and visitors. I want you to appreciate your own backyard, your community. Uh, you know, I mean, think about the impact that you not only have uh, with stealing this piece or the damage that you may cause, but what is the impact to the community and the culture? And that was John Paul Barajas reporting. San Antonio police are aware of all three incidents. Meanwhile, both the San Antonio River Authority and Foundation say they are looking to replace the stolen items. They're also planning to add more security cameras to the parks. The Bear County Sheriff's Office held a career fair hoping to attract new recruits. The fair comes the same month as a historic pay raise for the department and a new program was launched. BCSO hopefuls got a leg up on their new careers with written and physical tests given. Sheriff Javier Salazar says... There was a good turnout yesterday, but he's not surprised given the massive pay increase passed by county commissioners on August 1st. 
Now, incoming officers can earn a starting salary of 61500 rather than the previous $58,704. So if you start in the jail, your starting salary would be 45000 instead of just the shy 42000 The change is needed given the roughly 250 open positions currently at the county jail. Young people are just not flocking to law enforcement uh, agencies' doors, knocking them down, trying to start their career. So we've got to be imaginative, but that's what we're doing here. This was also the first career fair since the launching of the Straight to the Streets program, which would allow recruits who meet the age requirements to bypass time working in the county jail and start working in patrol as long as they pass their tests. All right, time now just about 6.08, 79 degrees. All the way up to Death Valley, where we could be talking three to six inches of rain or more. We are following Hurricane Hillary as it takes to California. Sarah Spivey will let us know what this could mean for Texas. And speaking of Texas, let's take a live look out of the Alamo City right now. All right, so you walked across the pavement. It was hot. Did you feel it basically coming up to you? I survived. You survived. You it, made it. It's just, it's. we're all doing it together. We're all together. We're all in this together. We'll be right back. Hurricane Hillary at one point, a dangerous Category 4 storm, has weakened to a Category 2 as it heads towards Southern California. So Governor Gavin Newsom issuing a state of emergency for much of that region. Millions across the southwest now bracing for the strong winds, heavy rains, and potentially life-threatening floods. As ABC's Lionel Moyes reports, Hillary is on track to be the first tropical storm to hit the state in more than 25 years. Millions across the Southwest are bracing for Hillary. We want you to be safe. With potentially dangerous weather conditions on the horizon, including high winds and flooding, power outages. Video from the International Space Station shows the powerful storm churning in the Pacific. Already impacting parts of Mexico, Hillary now headed towards Southern California, a tropical storm warning in effect for Los Angeles and San Diego. What we know for certain is that there will be sustained high winds of up to 50 miles per hour and that there will be enough rain to flood low-lying areas. We continue to ask people to shelter uh, in place during the storm. In Orange County, crews are busy building massive sand berms to protect beaches. Newport Beach is providing residents with sand bags. We're just preparing for the Hurricane Hillary that's coming into uh, Southern California. And in San Clemente, workers are laying down plastic tarps to help guard against mudslides. The San Bernardino County Sheriff's Office issuing evacuations for several areas, and officials are advising everyone to avoid travel. If you do not need to be on the roadways, we are asking you to postpone any of your non-essential travel until the peak of the storm passes. The Southwest could see heavy rainfall through early next week. A high risk of flash flooding from Palm Springs all the way up to Death Valley, where we could be talking three to six inches of rain or more. Parts of California, Nevada, and Arizona possibly getting more than a year's worth of rain in just 48 hours. Lionel Moyes, ABC News, New York. All right, guys, yes, they are going to be dealing with, in some places, more rain than they see in a span of a year. Meanwhile, here in San Antonio, we're practically begging for rainfall, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, today, guys, we are going to be at our 22nd 100-degree day in a row. That is a record for the most 100-degree days, a triple-digit heat streak. 22 from July 30th to today and not to be outdone. I mean, from July 8th to the 22nd of this year, we also had 15 100 degree days in a row. So very impressively hot this summer for us around San Antonio. Here's a look at forecast highs in your neighborhood. It'll be 105 in Del Rio, 100 in Rock Springs, 108 in Catula, 103 in Beeville, 105 in Gonzales. A little bit closer to San Antonio, 101 Bernie, Holotus, Bulverde, 104 in Pleasanton, 105 in Floresville, 104 in Seguin, 102 Yavaldi, 103 Utopia, and 102 in Kerrville. So take advantage of the cooler temperatures right now before it gets too hot. 80 in San Antonio, 76 in Holotus, 77 in Bulverde. It's 76 in Divine Good Morning in Bandera, where it's 75 degrees, 77 in Bulverde. And looking at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, here's the, the quick warm up that we have in store today 86 around 10, 94 at 
afternoon. Mostly sunny skies for the first part of the afternoon, but in the latter half of the afternoon, we're actually going to see some clouds increase. It's still going to be hot, though. It's a subtle change. 103 in the afternoon for the high temperature. All right, let's talk about some good things, right? There is a chance for rain on Tuesday. Now, I have got to temper expectations because I know how much we want rain. There are going to be a lot of us that miss out on the rainfall on Tuesday because the heaviest of the rain will stay south of San Antonio, but there will be some of us that get some rain on Tuesday. So about 40% chance and 40% coverage, all because of this tropical wave, which is north of Cuba. Now it started to enter into the Gulf of Mexico. It has a 50% chance of developing into a tropical depression or tropical storm, basically a 50% chance of becoming more organized, regardless of if it gets a name or not, it is going to be bringing South Texas some moisture. Here's a look at the future cast by early tomorrow morning. That area of low pressure will be in the central Gulf. OK, so tomorrow is going to be pretty much more of the same triple digit heat for us. But by Tuesday morning, that moisture will be moving on to shore between about Corpus Christi and Brownsville. And as we head throughout the morning on Tuesday, it'll be messy for folks south of San Antonio. We're talking from Corpus Christi to Laredo, probably a lot of rain on early on Tuesday morning. But notice here in San Antonio, we are going to be on the north side of this system. So missing out on very, very heavy rain, but we could see one or two areas of brief downpours throughout the day on Tuesday. Notice that if you live in southern Atascosa County, if you live closer to Catula, Eagle Pass, much better rain chances. As we head into Tuesday afternoon, that low will be moving through South Texas. And again, we could see a, a brief downpour throughout the afternoon coming and going on Tuesday, perhaps even up in the hill country where the drought is the worst. But this is not going to be widespread deep soaking rain for us in San Antonio. Different story potentially for Eagle Pass to Catula to Beeville, where there's expected to be a little bit more rain. But again, here in San Antonio, just a few passing downpours possible on Tuesday. Coverage will be about 40% and some people will miss out completely completely on the rain. Again, just trying to uh, lower expectations a little bit for the rainfall. The least rain across the hill country in San Antonio, more rain for Eagle Pass to Catula, and the most rain for areas between Laredo and Corpus Christi, where one to three inches of rain uh, will occur. Coming up, we'll talk a little bit more about Hurricane Hillary and the impacts to Southern California. We've had a lot of folks moving from California to South Central Texas in the last uh, Welcome. several years. So <laughs> those areas are going to get a lot of rain in South uh, California here in San Antonio, we may just be able to see temperatures below 100 degrees on Tuesday and Wednesday. That's about the best benefit we could get from that. Yeah, always tell all the Californians, sorry, welcome, it's hot. That's the way it is. <laughs> it's cheaper to live here. I was gonna say, they moved here for a reason, <laughs> let's just be clear. Yeah, absolutely. So welcome, all right, time now, 618, 79 degrees. Okay, we are less than a week away from the KSAT Pigskin Classic. We'll let you know how to join in all the fun as well as how you can help out San Antonio Food Bank at all four of our games. And today is the last day of summer vacation for so many students and families around the area. We're going to take a look at who's going back to the books tomorrow. Morning and welcome back. So today is the last day of summer vacation for so many students and families around the Alamo City. Let's take a look. So this is the list of the districts set to begin tomorrow. That's Comal ISD, Medina Valley ISD, New Braunfels, Somerset, Southwest. If you'd like to avoid school zones on your way to work, we have a full list of detours and alternate routes right now. Just head to KSAT.com. We are less than a week away from the 2023 KSAT Pigskin Classic. Tickets are on sale now on our website, sa.com. Just scan this QR code to see all of our ticket options. Remember, this is happening at the Alamo Dome. Very exciting time for these high school football teams and for the community. So our triple header is gonna be on the 26th with the game also on Friday. The 25th will be there live that morning right here on GMSA. So join us on air this weekend and then head out to the Alamo Dome right after the shows to catch some awesome San Antonio high school football. And of course, while you're enjoying the fun at the Dome, you can also score a touchdown with the San Antonio Food Bank. 
Our KSAC community will be collecting donations at the food bank during all four games over the weekend. Remember, we have one Friday, triple header on Saturday. If you're not able to make it to the weekend, we have a QR code on the screen right now. It's kind of blended into the graphic. You can head to KSAT.com on our website. Full list of all the foods that San Antonio Food Bank say they need the most. Time now, 623, 78 degrees. Well, lots of changes coming to certain social media apps. We'll tell you what's going on with your favorite platforms, Max. Elon Musk announced this week that X, formerly known as Twitter, will be deleting the block function for accounts. It's actually funny because just moments ago, he just tweeted saying, or x I don't even know what the verb would be at this point. Oh my God, that's right? weird. Right, regardless, whatever verb we're using, hmm. uh, he just said that blocking people, complaining about the blocking is a taste of your own medicine. So there you go. So Musk on there saying that the block function makes no sense, saying there's no word yet of when it will change or if they will remove the blocking feature, if it will violate the terms of service. Sarah Spivey, your hand is up. I feel like blocking is actually very important, especially mm -hmm. for um, women. Yeah, because yep. I that mean, listen, I'm sure Sarah can relate to this. We've gotten some interesting things on Twitter before, and the safest thing to do is just block. And also for your Hold mental on, health. Let's see. Yeah. Can I block people? I can. You can. Still. Are you? Are you blocking me right now? I did officially just Max, block. Oh, wow. Successfully blocked. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm blocking you, Max. Snapchat's AI bot. You're You're, thank you. I'll follow you again. Thank you. <laughs> Briefly appeared to have a mind of its own. Okay, this is kind of crazy. And users said it freaked them out. Don't blame them. The platform's my AI feature posted its own story a one second image that looked like a wall, then stopped responding to messages. The company says it was just a glitch. All right, and background checks on Tinder taking a pause. Tech nonprofit Garbo, which performed the service for Match Group, ending the partnership with Tinder. Garbo's founder posted that the end came in part due to threats by bad actors on online platforms. I want to go back to this X slash Twitter thing. Okay. Uh, your last tweet was February 21st. <laughs> I haven't been on X. So, like, even if I were <laughs> no, to block I wouldn't you, even there know. would be zero changes. Okay, for the viewers, that's not my main social media oh, platform. Okay. My official KSAT one is on Instagram. Okay. I'm not taking uh, Zuckerberg must sides, but I'm an Instagram girl. But you are taking Zuck's side. Okay. That's fair. All right, time now, 628, 78 degrees. We'll be right back. Good morning. Welcome back. Happy Sunday. It is 631. It is August 20th. So yesterday you said you went out to a great dinner. Yeah, we went to farm table. It was so yummy. Um, they do seasonal vegetables with the season and we are in full blown <laughs> summer season right now. So I'm grateful that they were able to make something so refreshing and it almost like cooling down, Sarah. With, oh my gosh. Because yes. it was 100, and what did we get up to yesterday? We got up to 103 yesterday, and we're going to be close to 103 today as well. Officially at the airport, that was the high temperature. And officially at the airport right now, it's 80 degrees. Clear skies as we look out across downtown San Antonio. Southwest winds at about 5 miles per hour right now. And here's your forecast for the day. We're already going to be at 86 at 10, 94 at noon, 103 for the high. High fire danger once again today. We're kind of in that weather deja vu today. In fact, we'll be 22 100 degree days in a row for San Antonio. We've got east southeast winds today at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. Coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about about a few things. There will be a weather pattern shift on Tuesday. Temperatures will likely stay below 100 degrees and there's going to be a chance for at least some rain on Tuesday in San Antonio. But before you get your hopes up, this is not going to be drought denting rain. The heaviest of the rain will be well south of San Antonio, closer to the Rio Grande Valley. So coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about this. We'll also talk about Hurricane Hillary, its impacts in Southern California and which parts of Texas will be seeing the most rain uh, from a weak tropical wave in the Gulf of Mexico. Details ahead. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, police searching for a suspect with a machete who allegedly hit a stranger with the weapon at a 7-Eleven. Take a look. This happened around 2 this morning. Police tell us a man with a machete walked up to someone he didn't even know at a 7-Eleven, this one near I-35 and Fair Avenue. The suspect demanding the man's possessions, and when he didn't have anything or didn't want to give anything, the suspect started swinging the weapon. He actually hit the victim in the head with the machete. That victim taken to the hospital, at last check, stable. 
Still, police searching the area weren't able to find the suspect. If you have any information that can help police, you're asked to call 911 immediately. Two victims are waking up in the hospital after a West Side house party became the target of a drive by shooting. This happened at around 1130 last night near North General McMullen Drive. SAPD says a house party was going on when two men, a 17 year old and 18 year old were shot inside the home from a drive by shooting. So one had a gunshot wound to the leg. The other was shot in the head and the arm. Police have very little information on the suspects at this time. We know a lot of people are going to be out and about today. Early morning church, picking up some last minute school supplies. So there are some major road closures on the north side we want to let you know about. So take a look at your screen. Text dot closing portions of loop 1604. This is all part of the 1604 North Expansion Project. Both directions from the northwest military highway exit ramps. Well, they're going to be closed. The intersection at Loop 1604 and Northwest Military Highway fully closed, including those turnarounds. Now, these closures in place from now until tomorrow morning, Monday morning at 5 a.m. We know people are still going to be out and about, so we have all that detour information. Some alternative routes for you. Just head to KSAT.com. Well, after some Texas drivers are saying toll fees they've already paid for are now causing hundreds of dollars of late fees, toll authorities are working towards solving these issues. So during this year's regular legislative session, Lawmakers filed at least nine toll related bills, including proposals to cap fines and fees and make toll roads free to use once bonds are repaid. But the only one to become law was now users with electronic tags must be notified with an automatic payment when an automatic payment is rejected. So that law takes effect September 1st. The Texas Department of Transportation is saying they took no official position on the fail toll related bills discussed during the session. Well, just a day after Dan Patrick announced that he was appointing Mark Brown, who was a former justice on the 14th Court of Appeals from Harris County. He was appointing him for the upcoming impeachment trial of indicted Attorney General Ken Paxton. Well, Mark Brown declined the appointment. So the trial rules that Dan Patrick does have the option of selecting his own legal counsel. Patrick said he selected Mark Brown after months of searching, but Brown declined the appointment yesterday because he released that he had previously donated to Ken Paxton's opponent, Eva Guzman, back in 2021. Brown releasing an articulate statement that you can read on KSAD.com, in part saying, quote, this trial is far too important for Texas for there to be any distractions involving any allegations of favoritism or personal bias on my part, end quote. Two NASA astronauts made an out of this world visit to a Texas Children's Hospital in Houston. Astronaut Shell Lindgren and former astronaut and former director of the Johnson Space Center, Mike Coates, visited the center and also got a chance to meet the patients. Coates answered one boy's question about showering in space. And Lindgren responds after another boy asked, what goes through an astronaut's mind in space? Other curious questions the patients asked were what astronauts eat and if they've ever seen an alien. Ooh, good question. If you want to hear their answers, just look for this article on KSAT.com. Well, back here in San Antonio, a chef tells us his family lost everything in those Maui wildfires. Now he's leaning on our community for help. His restaurant, Best Quality Daughter, now serving up two specials to help support the family who is now homeless. Avery Everett sat down with the chef who said San Antonio has already stepped up. Some fried spam. Handmade. And then from there we just roll. With Hawaii in mind. I just kept getting my call dropped every time I called them, so panic mode set in. I didn't know what to do. Chef Christopher Busa at Best Quality Daughter was born and raised on the Hawaiian Islands. As the recent wildfires swept across Maui, Communication was lost with his family. They couldn't call in or out of Maui. Relief that they were okay. There's a Brittany in house. And then heartbreak to hear their home was lost. And that's our cottage. The Booza family took this video earlier today showing what's left of their home. It, it hurts, uh, it hurts deep, you know. It, there's no place like being home. Best Quality Daughter is hoping a new fundraiser will help the Booza family push forward. Hopefully it can provide them even just a little tiny bit of relief. Your spam will be. Through the rest of August, all earnings from these two dinner specials will go directly to the Boozas. It's going to a family that we know and care for. Sweet soy, we go over the top. Spam Musubi and a new My Guy cocktail. 
Dishes designed by the team to honor and help the Guza family on Hawaii. Everybody was just behind me 100%. They have our furikake. Even an ocean away. Oh man, it's everything to me. Guza says his San Antonio community is stepping up to help. The moment we hit the ground running, we just, San Antonio came in and just started pouring their love for us. These two specials will run through the end of August. For other ways that you can help Best Quality Daughter and the Booza family, head on over to KSAT.com. I'm Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. And today at the Pearl, you can help those affected by the Maui fires. 50% of every cup purchased at the Pearl's Farmer's Market will go directly towards supporting those impacted. The Farmer's Market is from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. The San Antonio Zoo has big plans for expansion and upgrades. It's a multi-year plan. It's going to be tens of millions of dollars. And that is why Tim Morrow, president and CEO of the San Antonio Zoo, set to join us at 8 a.m. this morning for Leading SA. We're talking about the big plans, what families will notice, the expansion of the zoo school, and all the fundraising efforts. If you have any questions you want to ask, you can head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Submit those questions. Then join us for the full conversation at 8 a.m. I'm excited. I'm super. I mean, this expansion project is going to be amazing. I've been asking um, Kyle, mm -hmm. who's, Kyle our, who's our <laughs> who's our point of um, contact over contact there. over there about the gorilla yeah. exhibit. Well, don't don't steal the okay, well, Tim's thunder over here. A little bit of a tease there. I'm going to be asking Tim about the gorilla exhibit. I'm excited. That's upcoming. Oh yeah, time now 6:40, 78 degrees. Well, still ahead on GMSA, 11 San Antonio eateries made it onto Yelp's top 100 places to eat in Texas. Okay, we'll see if any of your favorites made the list. And from the Houston, Texas to the Cowboys to UTSA and Incarnate Word, so much looking forward to in sports. We got football, Sarah, and it's exciting. You know, you gotta get excited about something in this heat. How the football teams are having two a days right now? Oh my goodness. Oh, I don't know. Maybe, Hydrate. Maybe us Texans have a superpower living mm. through these triple digits. Sarah Spivey will have her forecast when we come back. Alrighty, everyone, welcome back. It is going to be a hot day today. Temperatures are already warming up. It's 78 right now, but by about uh, 10, it's going to be 86 degrees. Mostly sunny skies, 90 already around 11. And then at noon, 94, 97 at 1, 100 by 2 p.m. And then in the afternoon, 103. It's going to be our 22nd 100 degree day in a row and our 55th 100 degree day for the year so far. And then later on tonight, temperatures will fall into the 90s after sunset. Take a look at highs in your neighborhoods. 102, Kerrville, 104 in Canyon Lake, 105, Car Carissa Springs, 103. Three. In Beeville, 106, Laredo, 105 in Del Rio, 104 in Eagle Pass. All right, that heat high has been nudged a little bit off to the east because of Hurricane Hillary. Currently a Category 1 hurricane. It was a Category 4 hurricane, but it's entered some cooler waters starting to weaken. It is not expected to be a hurricane by the time it impacts areas in Southern California. It'll be a tropical storm. Really, the biggest impact from Hillary will be the rains. All right, localized 10 plus inches of rain across parts of the desert. In fact, some areas will see a year's worth of rain today in the matter of hours as Hurricane Hillary uh, falls apart and just becomes a huge slug of moisture moving through Southern California today. Meanwhile, our eyes are on the Gulf of Mexico. There is a tropical wave that has a 50% chance of development out in the Gulf of Mexico, becoming perhaps a tropical depression or tropical storm. But regardless of development, it is going to bring some moisture to deep south Texas. Now I've got to let you know better rain chances from Corpus Christi down to Brownsville. Okay, that's where the heavy rain is going to be. In San Antonio, we're only going to see few passing downpours here and there. Some people will miss out on the rain entirely. Here's a look at the future cast. This is overnight Monday into Tuesday. That moisture will be moving onto shore. And then by Tuesday morning, heavy rain falling from Corpus Christi out toward Laredo with San Antonio really not seeing much early, early Tuesday morning. Then by the middle of the morning, 
morning, closer to lunch, there is the possibility for a few passing downpours. Again, notice very sporadic around San Antonio. Heavier rains possible from Catula, even in southern Atascosa County. But then as that low starts to move off, we'll really only be dealing with isolated rain in the afternoon on Tuesday. Notice that some areas in the hill country could see an isolated shower or storm on Tuesday, but this is not going to help the exceptional drought out there across the hill country. But areas like Eagle Pass could end up seeing a lot of rain. Same story on Tuesday in the evening, perhaps an isolated shower or storm as that low completely moves off and then we'll be done with the rain on Wednesday. So looking at rain chances again, 40% chance on Tuesday as far as coverage and chance of rain goes. The heaviest of the rain will stay south of San Antonio, closer to Corpus Christi, uh, Laredo, and the Rio Grande Valley. That's where the heaviest of the rain will be. Uh, but the good news is we could stay below 100 degrees on Tuesday as we'll have a little bit more cloud cover, perhaps a passing shower or storm. Just want to lower people's expectations for the rain because rain is a precious commodity. We desperately need heavier rainfall. It doesn't look like this is going to be the one for San Antonio, but some parts of Texas will get rain, which is always good news for us. Then after that low moves out of here, we are back to the triple digit heat by next weekend. We'll be back with more news after the break. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. Good morning and welcome back. Hey, how about those Texans? Texans and the Dolphins squaring off in week two of the NFL preseason. As expected, quarterback C.J. Stroud much sharper compared to his debut last week. So Stroud played the entire first half. He was 7 to 12, 60 yards, helped the Texans get to this field goal in the second drive. That ended up being the only scoring for Houston as Miami won the game 28 to 3. Things starting off strong for Houston. Though Denzel Perriman picking off Tua Tagovailoa. First play of the game, but when it's all said and done, the Texans defense, they allowed 205 yards rushing and, of course, a loss. Yeah, with the run defense overall, it's not representative of who we need to be on defense, right? It, and it all starts with the fundamentals first. First, we have to set the edge. The ball got outside way too many times, and it comes down to tackling. The tackling was not good enough. I'm taking steps every, every week, so I'm really excited for the future, man. And um, I actually appreciate the mistakes and the lessons learned because you don't really get them anywhere else. Um, you got to learn and you got to have scars. So for me, I mean, I, I thank God for them, even though they might not look good on, on TV or look good to other people or uh, whatever the case may be. But um, at the end of the day, man, it's about uh, what God's plan is for my life and, and, and this team. All right, so you heard from right there, the second overall pick, C.J. Stroud, not officially announced as the Texans starter, but he started both preseason games, almost worked exclusively with the first teams at practice making it all in all more likely he will replace Davis Mills this season. All right, to our other Texas team, the Cowboys on the West Coast comes to an end. Following their game last night, Dallas taking on Seattle. Week two of the preseason, no Cowboys starters in the mix. Geno Smith, though, for Seattle looks sharp. Two drives. Drew Locke led Seattle to a pair of second quarter touchdowns, but at the end of the day, the Cowboys lost 22 to 14. We're going to have so much more on this game. Hear from some of the Cowboys players tonight on Instant Replay. Here we go, UTSA retiring its fall football camp, allowing the focus to fully shift onto its week one matchup. First game in the AAC, taking on Houston. It's not just any game though. It's a rematch and a chance for the Roadrunners to avenge last season's opening triple overtime loss at the Alamo Dome. This is a big year for UTSA. Their national prominence on the rise, on the line, and curiosity near the program, an all time high. There's just excitement behind just going and be able to play somebody other than ourselves for, you know, the first time in a long time. Um, you know, I mean, just being able to, like I say, get back to the season and get back in the swing of things and, um, you know, being able to play somebody other than ourselves, is just, there's just excitement behind that. Um, you know, I mean, like you said, we played them last year down here and it wasn't the outcome that we wanted, but um, it's a new season now, you know what I mean? So we're just going to keep on preparing and do what we do and uh, go up there and play our brand of football. Last year was craziness. All right, here's good news. There's only 13 days until UTSA football begins. All right, let's talk last year's FCS semifinalist, Incarnate Word. All right, first year head coach, Clint Killall. He expressed his confidence in the team. I mean, why not? They had so much depth, so much talent, so much excitement. They had their media day this weekend. UIW enters the 2023 
college football season with Texas A&M transfer Zach Calzada at quarterback and returning receivers. We got Brandon Porter, we got C.J. Hardy, we got Jalen Campbell, just to name a few. Wide receiver play has never been an issue at UIW. You know, and that's that's just who we are. That's the identity that we've created. Um, and, and it's easy, you know, from the outside looking in to see you lose two All-Americans and it's like, okay, what's next? But, you know, you talk about a guy like Jalen Campbell and in my opinion, um, last year could have went anywhere in the conference and started. So speaking of this, it'll be Cardinals first season with the new head coach at the helm, youngest head coach in the Division One, UIW's first home game, September 23rd. So. We got football. We have high heats. We have 100 degree day after 100 degree day, but we got football. Okay. Yeah. Hope everyone's safe out there. Stay hydrated. Absolutely. Time now, 655, 78 degrees. We'll be right back. All right, just a reminder, fire danger is high today. Got to remind you because, again, we have seen some grass fires locally. So please use caution, especially up in the hill country and out west toward Del Rio. That's where fire danger is highest. Looking at today's forecast, 86 at 10, 94 at noon, 103 for the high today. Winds are going to be turning to the east at 10 to 15 miles per hour. And then all eyes are on Tuesday. Now, Tuesday will only have passing downpours here in San Antonio, but the heaviest of the rain will stay south closer to the Rio Grande Valley. But what I'm I'm really excited about is look at those highs 97 on Tuesday and Wednesday we're at 99 I didn't think we would be so excited about temperatures being <laughs> below 100 but here we are I'm all excited about the possibility of rain yeah a few of us will get some rain which is good news I'm definitely not going to be the few <laughs> <laughs> you know with your luck probably not <laughs> yeah that's fair all right I do want to you know try my luck at some of these restaurants 11 San Antonio restaurants making it on Yelp's top 100 places to eat in Texas last year for 2023. Okay, so here we go. Curry Boys Barbecue made it to number four. Nice. Wow. Never tried that And Gino's Deli Stop in Bai is number 20. And over on the Northwest on Northwest Military, Billy's Eatery and Coffee, number 32. Amazing. Yeah. Like amazing sandwiches. I want to go back to there. Gino's because they have the cheesesteak that David Elder says so is good. one of the best in the city. It. Yeah. Wow. I went to high school. Clark and Gino's would be on the way. I'd go. Nice. Breakfast of champions. For sure. And then Curry Boys, let me tell you, love Curry Boys. Hello, I mean, at number four, it's so got to be good. All right. We got Benji's Munch at 52. Have you been? No. No, me no. neither. All right. Uh, Hash Vegan Eatery. I feel like Sarah Coast is right up your alley. It's okay. Okay. Yeah, I've been there. They had, they had some good pancakes. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And PB&J with Tay is 57. Magpie, 63. Magpie, oh my gosh, their bread was the best bread ever. I have a bright with this list. And of Pata course. Daria is only 64. We got to bump that up. Yeah. And Chef's Table, number 95. See you back here at 8 a.m. See you guys at 8. Made it. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Two people shot in, at an overnight house party, leaving both in the hospital this morning. What San Antonio police are saying about that party? And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, it's less than 80 degrees now. How hot is it going to get? Could we see rain in the next week? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. For now, good morning. It's 8 o'clock. It is Sunday, August 20th. Thank good you so morning. much for starting your morning with us. Okay, so. Yesterday we talked about out and about during the peak heating hours of the day. What is that like till five o'clock? So you did exactly More like six thirty. Oh geez, or you seven. did exactly what not to do. I did, but I wasn't like out and about. I was crossing a parking lot. That's fair. But, but it you was, still felt the heat. It was still too much. I mean, Sarah, we got it to wait 103 yesterday. Yeah, 103 was the high yesterday. We're going to do it again today. I just got to remind everybody that fire danger remains high today. We had a grass fire in Medina County. It's 50% contained uh, 325 acres. So you may smell a little smoke in the air. Uh, that grass fire, though, is contained, which is good news. As far as air quality goes, it's fine right now. Just a little bit of smoke in the air for some folks. As you take a look out uh, across fire danger for areas in the hill country, you can see that it will be very high fire danger out in the hill country, very high fire danger out west toward Del Rio. And looking at today's forecast, by 10, we're going to be at 86 degrees. By noon, 94, 103 for the high temperature today. East winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Coming up in the forecast, we are going to be talking about this tropical wave. It has about a 50% chance of developing into a more organized system throughout the next couple of days. But this is going to be bringing parts of Texas some rainfall. How will San Antonio fare as far as the rainfall chances go? I'll have those details coming up in just a bit. Max and Sarah. 
Thank you, Sarah. Two victims in the hospital this morning after a West Side house party ended up a target of a drive by shooting. Take a look. This was a scene around 1130 last night. The home located near North General McMullen Drive. Now police on the scene telling us there was a house party going on when two men, a 17 year old and 18 year old were shot inside the home from a drive by shooting. One shot in the leg, the other shot in the head and the arm. Investigators tell us they have very little information on the suspects at this time, but police still working, trying to figure out what exactly happened, who pulled the trigger and why. A street fight ended with one man being cut on the, in the ear. San Antonio police say this happened around two this morning south of downtown. Two men got into a fight that led to a knife being pulled out. The victim was treated on the scene and is expected to be OK. Police were able to take that suspect into custody. And a 16 year old boy is dead after he drowned on the in the Kamal River in New Braunfels. Police call, were called to the tube shoot around 3 p.m. after the teen disappeared while swimming with his family above the chute dam. The boy's body was found near the dam just before 530 and was pulled from the water. He was given CPR until EMS got there to take him to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. The boy's name has not been released out of respect to his family. Police don't believe foul play was involved and are investigating what led up to this drowning. Well, the San Antonio Zoo has big plans for expansion and big plans for upgrades. It is a multi-year plan that's going to cost tens and tens of millions of dollars. Joining us in today's leading essay segment is Tim Morrow, president and CEO of San Antonio Zoo. Good morning, sir. Thank you so much for joining good, us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So, Tim, the zoo expansion, it's extensive. So for the families watching, what can they expect and really what is your guys' goal? Yeah, we have a lot of uh, construction going right now, a lot of improvements happening. The main project we have is an all-new entrance that uh, is going to greet guests uh, here later this year at the end of November, beginning of December. Um, and then throughout the zoo over the last few years, we've invested almost $80 million back into the zoo and really upgrading it and, and getting ready for these massive projects we have coming, like this front gate. And then early in 2025, we're going to bring back gorillas, which we haven't had since 1991, um, and a great, beautiful event center that will really help the zoo and host a lot of events for the community. Okay, Tim, I already told Kyle <laughs> over at the zoo that I want to be the official gorilla correspondent when this all goes down. Okay, so you said 2025, is that going to be the opening of that gorilla exhibit or is that going to be breaking ground? And also, this is supposed to be the biggest gorilla exhibit in the country? Yeah, this will we'll break ground probably in December of this year or January of next year of 2020. Four, <laughs> while my ears are blending these days. Uh, and then we're hopeful to open in the first half of 2025 with gorillas. So really excited and people will start to see construction uh, in that corner of the zoo in the next couple of months. And uh, just really excited about bringing uh, those gorillas back to San Antonio. The habitat is big, one of the biggest, if not biggest in the country uh, of two acres of gorilla space. And so uh, really immersive exhibit for our visitors that will see that and very enriching and welfare focused habitat for the gorillas that we'll bring in from other zoos. Tim, for our viewers sake, that gorilla habitat, you said two acres, the location for that, <laughs> Max is laughing. This is, not, I am, <laughs> Sarah's been talking about the gorillas throughout the entire so morning. Excited. Okay, <laughs> but the location of it, it's going to be the back of it. Will it be, will it back into the Hildebrand part of, I'm just thinking of yeah. like location. Is that where it will be? Sure. Yeah, so it's near, if you're familiar with the zoo, it's, it's almost between hippo, I mean, I'm sorry, rhinos and lions that kind of upper corner area of the zoo at hildebrand and 281 and so um it's an area of the zoo that had been kind of empty for the last few years it was called the treetop before um and so we renovated rhino recently we renovated lion and it's kind of that big space in between um and if people remember coming to the zoo when we had cheetahs that the, the cheetah habitat will become part of gorillas and a few other habitats will be turned into this amazing gorilla space Awesome. Now, Tim, I know a lot of families watching. They're super intrigued with the zoo school. Will there also be an expansion of the school? More kids can attend? Yeah, uh, we have a great problem and challenge at Will Smith Zoo School. We have around 240 children that go to that nature-based preschool, and the waiting list is now over 8,000. And so the zoo is actively working with a committee of philanthropists and business leaders and other people to kind of just think through how we can scale that school. We know there's a big demand for parents want their children in nature-based preschools and nature schools like this. And so we're working on how we can expand the reach of that Will Smith nature-based uh, nature preschool. 
And obviously, this is a multi-year plan. We talked about it costing tens and tens of millions of dollars. Have you guys put a final price on it? How much is it going to cost? And where are you getting the funds from? Sure. The overall master plan is probably around 200 to 250 million dollars, and that's going to be over the next 10 to 15 years. Um, Gorillas is just the big start of what we're doing with this entrance and event center, and so uh, really excited about the long-term plan of the zoo. And the sources we are using, uh, utilizing to help us fund this are one philanthropy, so corporations, um, individuals, foundations uh, contributing to the zoo. We are a 501c3 nonprofit, so we need donations to to build and to expand and get better. Um, the city has been amazing with us, with assisting us with funding through the bond and other sources. Um, and then things like new market tax credits, historic tax credits. Um, we're hoping the county will want to participate at some level at some point. And so uh, just really anybody that wants to help, we are accepting that and working really hard uh, to raise those funds to uh, make San Antonio Zoo the best zoo on the planet. Okay, and we know the Spurs are making a play to attract more fans from Austin. So how is a zoo working to bring in visitors from the capital city and across the state? Yeah, well, we're really excited about the growth in Austin. And as everyone that lives in either one of those cities knows, they're really growing together. Um, and so we are the major zoo of South Texas, um, for, you know, from Del Rio to Corpus, um, over halfway to Houston and up past Austin. And so uh, we do know people from Austin visit our zoo and we do know people from Austin visit San Antonio. So just like the Spurs, uh, we really want to tap into that audience and be welcoming to them and get them to San Antonio and hopefully stay a couple nights in hotels, eat at all the restaurants and enjoy all these amazing attractions that we have in San Antonio. All right, Tim Morrow, President and CEO of the San Antonio Zoo. Thank you so much for your time this morning. We thank really you appreciate it. Thank Trying you, to stay Tim. cool out there, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, hopefully that 100 degree will break one of these days and we'll be a little bit cooler also. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Perfect tease because we're going to be hearing from Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Time now at just about 809, 78 degrees. Still ahead, a look at things to do in the San Antonio area. Some events coming up and some already happening now. Okay, look after the break. We're going to introduce you to a National Scrabble Championship winner. I actually got to meet up with this winner and she says what it takes to be a Scrabble champ. Also, what was her winning word that mm. helped her win that? Did you play her? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, no. These, the, the people that meet and play with these Scrabble champs, they're good, real good. You know who's also real good at Scrabble? Sarah Spivey. We're going to check in with her in just a few moments. Good morning and welcome back. You know what? I'm just going to keep the water bottle on the desk. We're hydrating here. It's Let's hot go. outside. <laughs> All right. Good news. After a Burbank High School librarian recently won her division at the National Scrabble Championship in Vegas. Look at that. It was very cool. So I spoke with that Scrabble champ about her love for textiles and what it takes to never be at a loss for words. My mom liked Scrabble and my aunt. They were both, you know, wordsmiths. They loved it. And that kind of just got me interested. From just interested to a Scrabble champ. Jennifer D. Walshie, the librarian at Burbank High School, won first place in Division Four at the Scrabble Players Championship in Las Vegas this summer. It was her husband that got her into playing competitively. It's actually how they met. We played our first game on our second date, and I beat him. It was words at first sight. But um, he knew that I was a player, so I got his attention. Jennifer says her competitive career started out like a bag of jumbled letters. Her first tournament in 2012 was a HOT mess. I lost every game and I wasn't sure if I was cut out for that because I was pretty competitive and I didn't like losing that much. But by my third tournament, I actually came in second and won like $25 at that tournament. She says she began teaching Scrabble at her then middle school as an after school club. 29. That helped her become the queen of the Scrabble dictionary. And the highest scoring word that Jennifer's ever played inquired for 203 points played as a triple triple but what about the word that helped her win at nationals stalker s-t-o-c-k-e-r at the championship jennifer went on a winning streak winning 14 games in a row and says that word helped her come back in a match that she thought she would for sure lose when i was losing by over 100 points in the middle of the game and i was almost giving up but i drew the blank which was very helpful i got a bingo down and then um, had the blank drew the e that i needed and i was able to put the word stalker down which helped her stock up on the points and win her division her advice to those who want to play like her read a lot study your scrabble cheat sheet and player's dictionary 
and have board vision. And knowing, you know, when to open up the board or shut it down or finding those great plays. It's strategy, you know, it's the art of competition and learning how to be a gracious winner and a gracious loser, you know. So there's just so many things that you get out of Scrabble. You know, what's really cool about this is that um, a competitive Scrabble club, they meet every Thursday at 6 p.m at the Lions Field Adult Center right off Broadway. Mm -hmm. And they actually said anyone can come. Anyone nice. can come if you're interested in learning. Uh, Sarah Spivey was asking me, they have timers. Yeah, because it's competitive Scrabble. Mm. They have 25 minutes, like for the- Total. Whole. Yeah, so it's, it's like, you know how chess times yeah. and you, you, you know, oh, I'm gonna take extra time on this word or I'm gonna make this real quick. I mean, they play by the rules that they do at the national level. So I learned a lot. I am not a game board girl. Did you play it all? No, I'm not a game board girl. I don't have board vision, as she called it. Sarah Spivey, you're a game board girl. I love Scrabble. I love playing Scrabble. I beat my husband finally for the first time. So I've got to throw that in there. All right. Hey. Sorry, Michael. Sorry, Michael, about that. <laughs> Um, so it is hot. I can only say it's hot so many times. So this weekend we have been highlighting some of the students at Sunshine Cottage School for Deaf Children. Oh. And today we've got a look. Here you go. It's so hot outside. We can drink some water and be in the shade. That is great advice, Joseph. Thank you so much. Make sure to drink some water and stay in the shade. Today we'll make 22 consecutive 100 degree days since July 30th. This will be our longest streak on record. Records date back to the 1880s. But just earlier, July 8th through 22nd, we had 15 100 degree days. It's going to be 103 in San Antonio today, 105 in Del Rio, 100 in Rock Springs, 108 in Catula, 104 in Canyon Lake, and 102 in Kerrville, 101 Holotus, Bernie, and Bulverde, 103 Poteet, 105 in Floresville, and Nixon Smiley, 104 in Seguin, and 105 in New Braunfels. So enjoy temperatures while they're temporarily in the 70s. 79 in San Antonio, 74 in Holotus, 79 in in Hondo, 70 in Comfort, and 72 in Kerrville. Looking at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, quickly warming up from the 70s to 90 degrees by 11, 94 at noon, 100 at 2 p.m., and 103 for the high temperature today. Again, our 22nd 100 degree day in a row, our 55th 100 degree day for the year so far. But it's not all bad news in the forecast. There is a chance for some rain on Tuesday here in San Antonio, although I do have to Make sure to manage our expectations. The heaviest, most beneficial part of the rainfall will be well south of San Antonio. Some folks will miss out on rain entirely on Tuesday. But the source of the rain is this tropical wave over Cuba, which has about a 50% chance of developing into a more organized tropical depression or tropical storm. But regardless of development, it is going to be bringing us moisture. So let me take you through the future cast. This is a look at early tomorrow morning. By that point, the tropical wave will be in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. It'll be moving onshore with its moisture between Corpus Christi and Brownsville early Tuesday morning. We're talking about the pre-dawn hours of Tuesday morning. Then some decent rainfall will fall from areas in Laredo out toward Corpus Christi. Notice that in San Antonio, again, we're well north of this system. So all we can expect to get is perhaps a few uh, passing downpours here and there starting mid morning on Tuesday with heavier rain again falling well south, perhaps in southern Atascosa County, Frio County, out toward Catula and Eagle Pass. But again, in San Antonio, it'll be few and far between uh, passing uh, showers and storms into the afternoon as well as that low moves off to the west. So areas like Eagle Pass again could see some decent rain from that. But here in San Antonio, this is pretty much all we'll get a few passing downpours here and there and again because of the nature of this there will be those that miss out on the rainfall completely and there will be those that see a passing downpour so when we look at rainfall unfortunately san antonio one of the areas that will see the least amount of rain same story with the hill country where we desperately need rainfall but the least amount of rain
rain is possible from this system. More as you go south toward Pearsall, Catula, Creso Springs, and Eagle Pass with the most rain falling between Laredo and Corpus Christi, one to three inches of rainfall. That's not the only tropical uh, thing that's going on. Coming up, we are going to talk about Hurricane Hillary, which will be bringing a lot of rainfall, flooding rains to parts of California. As for our weather, we will have the potential to drop below 100 on Tuesday because of the extra cloud cover and the passing rain. Well, we may stay below 100 on Wednesday as well, but we'll be back to the triple digits by the weekend. Mm. I know. It's sad that we're excited about like 97. I know. It, that just shows you how hot it's been, you know. And 97 is about 10 degrees cooler than the weather we've been dealing with. Okay. That's crazy to think about. Yeah. A great way to beat the triple digit heat this next coming weekend. Mm. KSAT Pigskin Classic. Oh, look at Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Inside, Inside the, the Alamo Dome, Dome, which is actually pretty cold. I might actually have to bring a sweater. So, Friday and Saturday, <laughs> right? No comments. <laughs> All right, 821, 80 degrees. Let's take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, five, eight, six, fireball two, daily four, three, one, four, zero, fireball nine. Uh, so, History Texas just tweeted out Elvis at the Alamo Dome from like several years ago, obviously. I retweeted it, so check it Wait, out. Wait, what? Or X, whatever we're calling Twitter oh, now. Oh, X? Yeah. Was X'd out? Okay. Is that what we're saying? I don't know. Let's take a look at these numbers. You still play Cash 5? I haven't. I haven't recently. I okay. played um, Powerball. I didn't win. Okay. Here are your Cash 5 numbers. 13, 18, 28, 29, 30. You know how I know you didn't win? Because I'm here. Because you're here. Mm -hmm. Lotto Texas, 8, 16, 26, 27, 41, 43. Here you go. If you did play the Powerball, 1, 25, 27, 38, 62. Powerball 13. Power play 2. Good luck. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. So there's so much to do in and around San Antonio. A new Tim Burton exhibition called Dreamland opening up the McNay, celebrating the 30th anniversary of The Nightmare Before Christmas. All right, Nightmare Before Christmas. Halloween movie, Christmas movie? Halloween movie. Okay. Thousand percent. Don't answer. All right, it gives visitors <laughs> a glimpse into the world of Burton now until January 14th. Original models of the beloved Burton characters like Oogie Boogie. Exposed. Oogie Boogie Man. Whoa. Oh, beautiful. No? Great rendition. Uh, Bone Crusher and Jack Skellington. They're going to be spotlight at this exhibition. Okay, Chick fil A adding a new sandwich Ooh, to like its Chick menu options. Max introducing the honey pepper pimento chicken sandwich. Cannot be bad. I love pimento tea. Oh, cheese. Me too. So All right, so the popular fast food chain says the new sandwich features an original Chick fil A. Topped with creamy pimento cheese. And, oh, this is where it gets me. The pickled jalapenos. You are such... I don't know. How are you even going to describe this? Let's go. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> where right. are you going to go with well, this let's go. let's go. Let's skip that. Served on a warm, toasted, bun drizzled with sweet honey. Okay. They said during testing, customers rated it so high on taste and value, putting it on par with the original Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich wow. the honey pepper pimento chicken sandwich rolls out at chick-fil-a's nationwide beginning monday august 28th my stomach is growling you loved anything pickled anything pickled uh so if you ever want to be like the star of like a party bringing food and whatnot Bring the, in pickled onions. No, I was going to say the, the chick-fil-a really went the other way with that one the chick-fil-a like pickled. chicken nuggets Everyone loves them. They're always the first thing gone. Yeah. yeah. With all the, wait, what, what's, all your the go, sauces, what's your go to honey dip? Honey mustard. Yeah. I knew we were a friend. Yeah. Look at well, that. I do honey mustard mm. for the nuggets. Okay. But for the fries, what do you do? See, it's different. I do love the waffle fries. Waffle fries with, with what dip? I use all the dips. Okay. You have more than one fry. You get to diversify. Okay. Chick-fil-A. Sarah solid. likes Chick-fil-A. I'm, I'm Our a producer. Our producer is like, this is, this is not ranch chopped. for the chicken waffle or for okay. the chicken waffle for the waffle fries okay. honey mustard for the nuggets <laughs> gotta put this algorithm on twitter or x <laughs> all right time now 8 27 80 degrees okay a state of emergency in washington state as three wildfires are burning still ahead what officials and firefighters are doing to get them under control Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It is Sunday, August 20th. Got it. Got it. Nailed it. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. I just feel like August is on repeat. It, it, or every actually, day has Sarah, seemingly felt. The last 22 days on repeat. Is, did I get that Guys, number right? The last 22 days, including today. So today makes 22 days where we have seen a high temperature of 100 or greater. So yeah, it makes sense that, you know, every day kind of seems the same. And today, weather wise, is going to be very similar to yesterday. We're starting off with sunshine, 79 degrees. Take a look at the forecast for the day today 86 at 10. Noon will be 94, 103. And then once again today, there is high fire danger. So keep that in mind. Yesterday, the fire started out in uh, rural Medina County. At the latest, it's 50% contained. So just be very careful today. Do not park your car on grass. Do not, uh, I mean, make sure to fully extinguish and expose of cigarettes properly. Fire danger continues to be high today. Here's a look at some weather headlines we're going to talk about in the forecast. There will be a weather pattern shift. We'll be done with the weather deja vu for a day. Tuesday, we will have a chance for at least some rain in San Antonio. But before you get too excited, any of the heavy beneficial rain will be well south of San Antonio. But there's still a lot to talk about. I'll show you the details. Take a look at the Gulf and we'll check in with Hurricane Hillary, which is going to be bringing a lot of rain to Southern California. Details ahead, Sarah. Sarah, thank you. Police are searching for a man with a machete who hit a stranger at a 7-Eleven. So this happened about two this morning. SAPD says a man with the machete walked up to another man that he didn't know at the 7-Eleven. This happening near I-37 and Fair Avenue. The man demanded his possessions. When he didn't give him anything, police say the suspect started swinging with that machete, striking the victim in the head. He was taken to the hospital in stable condition. Police searched the area and were unable to locate that suspect. One 18-year-old accused of sexually assaulting and killing an 11-year-old girl in Pasadena, the suspect now in custody. According to Pasadena police, 11-year-old Maria Gonzalez was home alone. So when she heard a knock at the door, she texted her dad, letting him know he responded not to open it. After she didn't answer his calls, he asked family to check on her. Uh, they found the door unlocked, items displaced around the apartment. Her father returned home to find her underneath the bed wrapped in a trash bag. Police say the suspect is going to be charged with capital murder. Well, here in San Antonio, a chef tells us his family lost everything in those devastating wildfires in Maui, and now he's leaning on his community for help. So the restaurant, Best Quality Daughter, now serving up two specials to help support the family who is seemingly homeless. A, uh, Avery Everett sitting down with the chef who said San Antonio is already stepping up. Some fried spam. Handmade. And then from there we just roll. With Hawaii in mind. I just kept getting my call dropped every time I called them, so panic mode set in. I didn't know what to do. Chef Christopher Busa at Best Quality Daughter was born and raised on the Hawaiian Islands. As the recent wildfires swept across Maui, communication was lost with his family. They couldn't call in or out of Maui. Relief that they were okay. There's a Brittany damn house. And then heartbreak to hear their home was lost. And that's our cottage. The Booza family took this video earlier today showing what's left of their home. It, it hurts, uh, it hurts deep, you know. It, there's no place like being home. Best Quality Daughter is hoping a new fundraiser will help the Booza family push forward. Hopefully it can provide them even just a little tiny bit of relief. Through the rest of August, all earnings from these two dinner specials will go directly to the Boozas. It's going to a family that we know and care for. Sweet soy, we go over the top. Spam Asubi and a new My Guy cocktail. Dishes designed by the team to honor and help the Booza family on Hawaii. Everybody was just behind me 100%. They have our furikake. Even an ocean away. Oh man, it's everything to me. Booza says his San Antonio community is stepping up to help. The moment we hit the ground running, we just, San Antonio came in and just started pouring their love for us. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. So these specials will run now through the end of August. For other ways you can best support Best Quality Daughter and the Booza family, head over to KSAT.com. 38 students from Prairie View a and University were taken to the hospital after showing signs of heat-related illnesses. This happened after their Panther Week activities Friday night. Houston officials say the students didn't show any symptoms until the end of the day. In a statement released from the university, it says in part, quote, several students reported symptoms of heat exhaustion. Emergency medical professionals were immediately dispatched to the scene to treat students for heat-related illnesses. 
as a precaution, students are encouraged to monitor themselves, end quote. It's unknown how many students are still in the hospital as of today. Well, yesterday, the Bear County Sheriff's Office held a career fair hoping to attract new recruits. Now, the fair comes the same month as that historic pay raise for the department and the same month as a new program. So BCSO, BCSO hopefuls got a leg up on their new careers with written tests and physical exams. Now, Sheriff Javier Salazar says there's a good turnout, but he's not surprised given the massive pay increase passed by commissioners back on August 1st. Incoming officers can now earn a starting salary $61,500, and if you start out in the jail, your starting salary will be $45,000. The change is needed given the roughly 250 opening spots. Young people are just not flocking to law enforcement uh, agencies' doors, knocking them down, trying to start their career. So we've got to be imaginative, but that's what we're doing here. This was also the first career fair since the launching of that straight to the streets program that allows recruits who meet the age requirements to bypass time working in the county jail. And that way they can start working in patrol as long as they pass the tests. The Russian Space Agency says its Luna 25 spacecraft has crash landed on the moon after spinning into an uncontrolled orbit. So the spacecraft was scheduled to land on the south pole of the moon on Monday in a race with India's spacecraft expected to land the same day. The launch earlier this month was Russia's first since 1976 when it was part of the Soviet Union. In a state of emergency in Washington state where three major wildfires are burning, one person confirmed dead, more than 200 structures damaged or destroyed. Thousands of people had to be evacuated as well. ABC's Morgan Norwood has more on the efforts to get these fires under control. This morning, a trio of raging wildfires tearing through Washington state, killing at least one person and forcing thousands to evacuate. The gray fire burning west of Spokane, the most destructive, close to 200 structures destroyed. Flames swallowing this home on Granite Lake. This is what it looked like before. Now only the frame remains. Firefighters from multiple agencies on the ground. Let's go ahead and upgrade this uh, to a second alarm. A flock of choppers fighting the flames from above, while farmers desperately dig their own fire lines as the inferno closes in. Oh, oh my God. This thick wall of smoke forcing I-90 to close for 20 miles. The gray fire scorching more than 9,500 acres, the Oregon Road fire burning 3,000, and the Winona fire ripping across 5,000 acres, all three zero percent contained. The devastation that happened in inside some of those areas, uh, I've, I've never seen anything like it in my entire life. Fire season in full swing out west. Overnight in California, a rapid inferno igniting, burning through more than 5,000 acres in Santa Barbara County. Feel the heat. Oh my God. Meanwhile, up north across the border, Canada still reeling from its worst ever wildfire season as the more than 1,000 out of control forest fires burn. Nearly 20,000 forced to evacuate Yellowknife Friday. And that was Morgan Nord reporting. The film Virtuosity, a reflection of art, a series that highlights local filmmakers in San Antonio happening next weekend, Saturday, August 26th at 2 p.m. located at San Pedro library is free to the public. The Saturday event will feature two local filmmakers showcasing their work. Those in attendance will be able to ask questions about their films. To learn more about this event, just head to ksat.com. Time now, 840, 81 degrees. Let's take a look outside with live cam. Already 81 by 840 on this Sunday morning. Hey, but Sarah Spivey says we have, there's still hope for a small chance of rain in a couple of days. She'll explain when that's happening when we come back. Their home and business sits on a tract of land approved by the city. Now one letter is leading to numerous citations. How did the city become aware of potential problems on a property with council approved zoning? Turns out that is quite a tale. KSAT investigates the criminal past of the disgraced former city official behind the letter and the developer who hired him. It's apparent to all of us what's going on. KSAT's investigation, including the developer's denial of involvement, is streaming now. Okay, so our producer just brought us ice cream that yeah. we're going to sample the Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg. And today is a good 
ice cream day, Sarah. Absolutely. It's been a good ice cream day for 22 days in a row <laughs> because we... Every today, day's ice cream day. Today we'll make 22 100 degree days in a row, which will take a record for the longest streak. So mm -hmm. impressively hot. Take a look at the forecast for the day today. Temperatures starting off in the 70s right now, but as you look ahead, we're going to be at 86 at 10, 94 at noon, and we'll have sunny skies, 103 for the high temperature. Not a record, but definitely going to be hot. And then tonight, Night, even after the sun sets, it's still going to be 96 degrees at 9 p.m. All right, here's a look at neighborhood highs. 105 in Del Rio, 105 in Creases Springs, 104 in Pleasanton, 104 in Canyon Lake, 102 in Kerrville, and 103 in Hondo. That heat high has nudged a little bit to the east, all because Hurricane Hillary is starting to move uh, on shore here in Baja, California, and it's bringing a lot of rain to California now. Hurricane Hillary is currently a category one hurricane, but it is expected to weaken very quickly and impact Southern California as a tropical storm throughout the day today. Now, not really concerned about the winds from Hurricane Hillary, but the rain. Now take a look at these rainfall totals. One to, uh, pardon me, three to six inches of rain across the desert with localized 10 plus. That's more rain than they see in a year in a matter of hours. So there will be flash flooding all throughout Southern California into Nevada today. Now, as we look to uh, the Gulf of Mexico and a tropical uh, wave that will impact us. There's a tropical wave that is uh, currently in Cuba and it has about a 50% chance of developing in the Gulf of Mexico in the next couple of days into a tropical depression or tropical storm. But regardless of development, it is going to bring rain to deep South Texas. Now, before you get too excited, the heaviest of the rain is going to be well south of San Antonio, but we will have a shot at rain, especially on Tuesday. Let me take you through the future cast. This is tomorrow morning. That wave will be in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico, moving on shore sometime very early Tuesday in the pre dawn hours between Corpus Christi and Brownsville. Again, the area of low pressure is going to be too far south to bring very heavy rains to San Antonio. The areas with the heaviest rains will be from Corpus Christi to Laredo and the further south of San Antonio you are, the better chance of seeing rain you have. Okay, look at the future cast at 10 o'clock in the morning. This to me is a good uh, indication of the kind of rain we're going to see. Spotty showers and storms in San Antonio throughout the day Tuesday. We're talking about a few downpours in San Antonio throughout the day as that low moves off to the west in the afternoon. We might see one or two of those reach the hill country as well. The hill country, of course, the area where the drought is the worst. This is not going to be widespread rain for San Antonio or the hill country. However, from Eagle Pass to Catula, we could see some widespread rain. This is more along the lines of what we're going to get on Tuesday. Spotty showers, far between, but still a chance for rain, which, hey, I mean, that is a big change in the weather pattern. So when we look at rainfall, the least amount of rain is going to fall for San Antonio to Hondo to Bandera to Rock Springs to Kerrville and New Braunfels. There will be some more rain for areas from Eagle Pass to Pearsall to Catula to southern Atascosa County, with the most rain falling from Laredo to Corpus Christi, one to three inches of rain in that bullseye of an area in deep south Texas. About 40 percent coverage for 40% chance there will be those of us that miss out on the rain completely on Tuesday. That's just the nature of this weather pattern. But as we take a look at the uh, forecast through uh, Tuesday, at least our highs drop to below 100 degrees. I forgot to do this before the forecast, but today we have from Sunshine Cottage School for Deaf Children, Vanellope giving us some uh, tips on how to stay cool. Take it away, Vanellope. Hi guys, well today is very hot outside, well today you're going to be wearing shorts and, and a shirt because it's very hot and drink a lot of water because it's hot. Way to okay. go, Vanellope! Vanellope is the cutest thing so ever. Cute. Also cutest name ever. I love so that name. Nice. She's adorable. Thank you so much to the kiddos at Sunshine Cottage for sending us videos Keep the them last coming. couple of days. Those are adorable. If you have a video of your kid you'd like to show during the weather, go for it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you, Sarah. 849, 81 degrees. As we continue through these 100 degree temperatures this summer, tomorrow on GMSA, KSAT producer Haley Powers explains how the heat is actually 
impacting our power grid and what you can do to save money on your next bill. All righty, we got the pollen count in. Molds are low. They're the only allergen present. They are 90. As you take a look outside right now, 82 degrees already in San Antonio. Calm wind conditions, and it feels like 88. Looking at the forecast, 86 at 10, 94 at noon, 103 for the high. High fire danger all day long, so please be careful today. As you look at your forecast, hey, there's something fun to talk about. A chance for rain on Tuesday with a high temperature in the upper 90s. Now it's important to note not everybody will see rain on Tuesday, but some folks will get some rain and temperatures will stay below 100 degrees for the first time this month. Guys, mm. we have got something fun that we're we talking about. We were listening to your forecast I while swear. eating ice cream. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me about these. This is Sno um, Snoop Dogg's Dr. Bombay ice cream. Dr. Bombay ice cream. We each got different flavors. Mine is iced out orange cream. It is, is so good. I did not think this was going to be this good. Tropical sherbet swizzle. You would get Cheers. sherbet. Cheers. And then uh, Max, Max, do you want to be included in this? I do. Hi. <laughs> he ate half of it in like 30 seconds. This is seconds. actually delicious. Cheers. 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 Uh, so I got the rolling in the dough. It's cookie dough. And the cool part is it seems like half of it is basically just like lined with cookie dough. You see that? Show. Show. Like the the entire like this quartile is just so full of So it's almost like a crust. It is, but then it also has chunks of cookie dough in here. Mm. I know. So I pulled up the website. It's fantastic. Free mind, find your flavor. And oh we gosh. got, so there was actually a bit of contention on the group chat this morning of mm -hmm. what flavors we were going to go with. Yeah. I was hoping that someone could go with, because on top of the ones that we got, I wanted someone to get bonus track brownie, because that see, sounded delicious. You know why I purposely didn't say brownie or cookie dough? Because why? you didn't want to help me? Well, because I knew that's what Max's going to want. Mm. So I'm like a sherbet Little now. sister I never I wanted. Am. <laughs> yeah, we could tell. <laughs> What? How can you, <laughs> no, you just what tell. does that There's mean? a certain kinds of people who like sherbet. You're just one of those so people. So I really wanted to go with brownie. Okay. I did. I like the s'more But for ones. dietary reasons, mm. I went for orange cream. There's cool. s'more vibes, which I love the name because you get to have so many different. Can I have like, s'more vibes? Yes, yeah, s'more vibes. I'm so confused. What's a sherbet gal? It's just a sherbet gal. <laughs> She's, so, know, it's just She's gonna be asking. But, so here's the problem. We had done a story with Bluebell a few weeks ago when they released their new flavor. Now we got to bring Bluebell on we here do. and see what compares because I'm pretty sure okay, this is like so a peanut butter. MJ got dough. these at HEB, right? Producer MJ, who's a hero. Thank you, MJ. Thank you. Hey, have a great day. I recommend. It's hot. Have some ice cream. Dr.